right. You guys are good with all the lives that are in here? Correct? Yeah, you'll have to tell me when they are, but good with it. Okay. We got the open going. Seriously? It's oh, wait, there we go. No, no, no. You can hear it, right? Yep. And now you're okay, just making sure. All right, you're hot. Parker and Ryan Freeman. All right, we can do this, right? Live on the air everywhere. It's the Modern Eater Show from Studio Kitchen, Colorado on the first show of August, Brian. Oh, what a warm August. All of a sudden, finally, the sun has come you out. You love to go to weather. I do, Everybody man. knows what the weather is. Out. No, 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 no. I rode, I rode several miles today in the weather, and it was awesome. We're in Nuts. Colorado. Yeah, it was. Well, here's what always is crazy. Here's why I'm always into the weather and why Greg talks about it is because. Because nobody cares about the weather. I, well, if you're a farmer, man, and you, you care about where your food comes from, you, you care TV about the weather, man. The radio. No, someone like Weather Underground is your best friend. If you're in my industry, you got trucks on the road, you got farmers harvesting. There's all kinds all I, all of. All I'm saying is yeah. most people aren't tuned into this show for the weather. No, they're they're food tuned in for local food and beverage. Yeah, let's talk about local food and beverage. Wait, uh, can we go back to the weather really quick? <laughs> it's awful, but I don't disagree with you. Like the harvest season, although it's a couple of weeks late, which just means it's going to last a little bit longer. Uh, yeah. So that actually makes me happy. That's uh, the beautiful dulcet tones right there, Lori Midson. Welcome Hello. to the first time in the kitchen. Hi. What a show we have <laughs> tonight, Lori. Um, <laughs> those of you that don't know Lori, and I think you probably do, if you if you listen to weather, maybe not. But if you have anything to do with food and beverage in Colorado, there's a good chance you've heard Lori Midson. And uh, Lori, uh, again, first time here in the kitchen. And what's cool, Brian, Lori and I have been friends for uh, quite some time. A little while. A, a little while. And she's one of those people to where, you know, friends, you, I don't talk to anybody really in my personal life. And so here it is. We come to the studio and I said, Lori, I want to catch up with you. She's like, this isn't the time and the place to catch up. You know, I'm going to set aside. This isn't about me tonight. I said, I know it, Lori, but you got to come in because I need to catch up with you. And you'd offer so much to the show. And I just can't thank you enough, Lori, for being here with us. As I share this post to my personal Facebook live on Facebook too, Lori, did you know that? I'm I'm really happy. I'm I'm drinking a old a fashioned two ninety one. Right Although whiskey there. this thing is the the, the, the mouthpiece is in the way, so I actually <laughs> 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 I know live radio, no yeah, man. There we go. Well but I'm excited to ask her a ton of questions because she's had an incredible career of what she's done. She's talked to let's many set up the chefs. Show yep, first. let's do it. All right, Lori's here with us. Oh, God, you're going to pop me with questions? We just got started. I know. <laughs> Seriously, I know. can <laughs> I finish my cocktail? We move fast around here. Do you like ice cream? Uh, yeah, I do. And, yeah. and the weather, which you were referring to earlier, absolutely calls for, for ice cream. cream. You guys yes. are gonna, Except for it just smells. Yeah, you're exactly. going to get me with smells. that weather. Yeah, thing, we right? are. <laughs> uh, Basha Cohen's here from Little Man Ice Cream and their new project they're doing in the Sloan's Lake area. Uh, on Colfax Avenue is J uh, Jay and I went to see this this past week. I encouraged you, Lori. You said, oh, I got a lot I of stuff going on. But yet. I think, you know, you might go after this to see the new spot. But, Jay, it was fun. Brian, I wish you were there. But this facility was so off the hook cool. And we've got some B-roll we'll show you. And that's another reason why we encourage you to tune into our Facebook page because you're seeing everything live here. And they're going to put together a banana split Ooh. like is that just for me size, like a yeah super for multiple one? people oh so we can all share <laughs> so we can all share all right so that's, that's the way to do it like a banana boat uh, like a banana <laughs> boat <laughs> split yeah <laughs> this one's not going to take off quick because a lot of people are going to be there with it uh check it in by phone because tuesday night it's the reason for the season and we do the summer dinner series here so Lori. Just yes. so you know, and this goes with the weather. Starting in the the summer <laughs> the equinox, the we weather. took off. Yeah, we went on a road trip to source a bunch of great ingredients here in Colorado. And when we went on this road trip, we got to meet a lot of new farmers, ranchers, brewers, distillers. We just went out and sourced the best products. We bring them back for eight weeks in a row. The summer dinner series. Chef Brother Luck is our week six chef, so we're six I, weeks I want to know why I wasn't invited to go on that road trip. Really? You, yeah. you would do that? I, you oh, would my do God, it? are you kidding me? Oh. You know it's just <laughs> the three written, of us right here. I would have right in, the, in the, back of the, 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 the back of the pickup. Lori. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I know we just technically I would have supplied met. beer. However, you could just be very careful about what you say about <laughs> what I wanting to attend the, the road trip because we'll bring you next year, but I'm telling you, I would there's a lot of things happening on that. 
man. I would really like a female in the car with us because I think it would it would help Greg keep you like a lot. It would there. help Greg a lot. It would just soften the atmosphere. <laughs> it would, yes, okay. it would it would it would help us all more. More, more like, people to talk to about the weather. More people to <laughs> show I, the I rising know. all the rising water Change around the, the state. Conversation. <laughs> so at uh, six forty five, our in the kitchen segment via telephone because he'll be here Tuesday night. He'll be in his kitchen at four by Brother Luck. Brother Luck's gonna join us. That's no lux allowed. Exciting. Sold out dinner. I actually, I, I do a lot of food writing for Visit Denver. Mm-hmm. And when uh, Top Chef was being filmed here, I actually loved writing about him because there were so many ways with puns for his last name, oh, yeah. Luck. Yeah, well, Dude's here, run out of luck. Oh, my God, look, his luck just went up. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things that he uses, and I stole it Lucky from duck. him f- for his dinner, is uh, no lux given. Because he, he doesn't give too. a luck yeah, at all. I know. He was amazing on Top Chef. Oh, God. I was He's, rooting for yeah. him. I'm super, super, I was super rooting for Carrie, too. Yeah. Um, but that last but what, chance. Way to, re- way to yeah. represent, right? He owned it. He yeah, did. Yeah, he did. 7 he o'clock, did. checking in will be Chris Johnson from Rome Sausage. We always like to take local ingredients and pair them up with local chefs. And uh, none better because we have Chef Dan Witherspoon in the house, and he's got a book. Did you know he this does. story? He does. He does. Actually, that's sort. Of, that's why I'm here for the most part. I he's know. got a great story, yeah, though, he as does. well. He does. He has he, a phenomenal really backstory. So it's called yeah. Mix, Match, Make, Take, yeah. High Energy Food for High Say Energy People. Say that five times <laughs> fast. I know, right? Mix, and, and Match, Make, Take. Take, which is very high energy food for wait high until energy you hear people. and you you know i don't have to say to you wait but our audience wait till you hear his philosophy in cooking yeah and being kind Absolutely. of your own personal chef and how you can mix match make and take right Anything so it's all about sort of cooking one meal and but that it lasts for two or three days just by adding substituting Perfect. integrating yeah. one or two different ingredients and he's hard at work right now yep. i'm a yeah, huge fan shopping, by the way of that he's chopping onions Actually, he's, he's got, got a little a fennel, fennel there. <laughs> he's got, he's, he's doing his fennel. Doing yeah, a little he is fennel doing there. fennel. Yep. That's all on our Facebook Yep, perfect slide. dice, too. And if that's not enough, there's more. There's more. There's, there's more. always more. And Raquel Serber, a chef from Alita, she's starting a new business. We are always a big advocate for people that want to take that leap, start their business. She wants to do some catering. And uh, right, right now working at the Juniper Pig, which is a great butcher shop in the Stanley Marketplace. And if you haven't been to the Juniper Pig, I'd say uh, if you like that old school kind of butcher shop surrounding, Juniper Pig, that'll scratch that butcher shop itch as, as I have one <laughs> right there. And then. Get your pig. Yeah. Not but not, uh, last but not least, and this is a cool one. Because uh, I love these two guys, Michael Myers and Philip Raleigh from Distillery 291 in Colorado Springs. So you kind of see a Colorado Springs theme tonight? Yes, I do. Around Brother Luck. So they'll be pouring delicious spirits and tasty drinks on Tuesday night. We are I was just going to ask. Yeah. You have an old right fashioned? I do have an old fashioned, and I have a huge collection of their whiskey at home. Do you really? Oh, yeah. I can never get it I, to my stay house, around it, that long. I mean, if you walked in, you'd sort of, it's like an alcohol museum. I want to my house is. I, I do. I need to. Ha- I, I need. I, yeah, I need to have a party. I All do. right. So, Lori, for yes. those folks that don't know you, what have you been up to? And what? So, first of all, let's take just one minute of a Lori biography. Go back a little. Why don't yeah, you give it, Greg? You should give it. Give, it, give an introduction yeah. to I, I her that's I proper, know, man. I, I, w- I wouldn't do a great introduction because oh, I have such and, a long and storied career, right? No, I um, I'm a food journalist and a travel journalist. I was the food editor of Westward for six years, the food editor of Zagat for twenty. I did the Zagat Denver blog, and I did all the Zagat survey books as well. Uh, I was a restaurant critic at 5280. That's sort of how my career started. Before everybody was a restaurant critic. Yeah, before everybody was a restaurant critic. Um, I took a year off because of a medical issue. Uh And I'm just sort of getting back into it a little bit. Glad to see you healthy. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah, you look great. I would never notice any kind. And so now I, I do all the food writing, restaurant writing for Visit Denver. I write about food and travel for Google. And I write about food for Avid Lifestyle Magazine, which is a magazine in the south suburbs. It's a sister mag to Colorado Avid Golfer, which I used to be the restaurant critic for as well. Um, I was a restaurant critic for the Rocky Mountain News, and I actually do some PR on the side. And actually, that's why I'm here today. It's not because of me, but I actually 
the agency for whom I work, Capital City Public Relations, uh -huh. represents Chef Dan Witherspoon of the Season Chef Cooking School. Capital who, City. Woo -woo. Yep, <laughs> Capital City. And he just released a great new cookbook. And he's actually cooking as we speak. I know. We're going to look forward to that. You do so well. But here's the thing, and what I'll say, and then we'll break off. And I know a lot of people don't like you to talk about them. But you talk about some people that have it, some people that don't. Some There's just that intangible. Lori's had that intangible thing throughout the years that's inspirational. And whether it's through her reading, uh, through the lens of a consumer, and you, you, you know, you, you, you read her words and either go somewhere and, 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 or not or, or just be involved in that food community. But she also inspired a lot of folks like myself that wanted to find their way in the food industry, whether it be a writer or talk about it, that you really had a lot of inspiration going around you through multifaceted things. And I, fa I find that fascinating about you is just that inspirational aspect. I think you're just saying I'm old. I've been around a long time that I'm a fossil. I, I, I really think that's like the underlying element of what you're saying. I, I think it's a really no, that's, cool It's really to nice to hear. And I, you know, I, I hear that a lot, especially from, from younger writers. Um, you know, that, that I did. I sort of kind of jump-started, uh, you know, I was writing about, I've been writing about food, especially the Denver food scene for almost 30 years, which is a long time. Long time. What got you um, into it originally? What made, what, where was that passion came from? You know, from? that's all, I've, I mean, all I've ever done is write. I ha have a master's in journalism, and when I was growing up, I think I probably learned how to cook truly before I learned how to walk. My mother cooked all the time, and she was, you know, you hear this a lot, but she was absolutely my inspiration, um, and she's just a phenomenal cook, and I was that, you know, I was that little kid that was on the step stool, and I was watching, and I was stirring, and I was baking cookies, and I was breaking eggs, and... <laughs> I think that that's really eggs. truly where your passion shines from. Sure, it is just that finding a passion. Yeah, and I just you know I I am fascinated by by different cultures, especially food cultures, um, which is one reason why I love the food scene in Denver. I think that there's a really great international food scene here that we don't see in a lot of cities of similar size, and that's kind of my niche, and that's where I started when I first started doing restaurant criticism for 5280, that was kind of my beat, is finding all those little off the path, under the radar, international restaurants that nobody was going to and nobody had ever heard of. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I got started. And I still, I still love doing that. That's my passion. It's just finding those little undiscovered places that no one's heard about. I'm going to make her stick around for as long as she promised till 7, but I'm going to see okay. what we can do. I think she's settling in nicely. <laughs> where would you grow up, though? I'm curious. Where are you I from? Up, I, so I'm born and raised in Denver. I've nice. lived all over the world. Lived in England nice. for a while, um, California, Chicago, some really great food cities. Um, you know, and, and my family's here and all the rest of it, so... I've been back, I moved back from Chicago probably Natural 25 fit. years ago. Wow. You know, and just seeing how Denver has grown has been just so eye-opening. It really has. That has to be unique, though, for a writer, Lori, in it town It does, especially here's. somebody who started 30 yep. years ago and has really seen the progression of how the Denver dining climate has yeah. changed and in 30 social years. media does a lot to and, that, too, which uh, some yeah. people say, Lori, stay off social media sometimes. That's a whole nother <laughs> I don't do show a lot of social itself. media. Yeah, but when you do, you go in with a punch. Yeah, I, I got one post in a year, and uh, boy, did that blow up. That was good stuff Oops. right there. I loved it. All right, we do need to take a break. We're a little bit behind, but I'll tell you what. She's the girl that has the curls that all of the girls <laughs> and guys want. Uh, she, it's Lori Mitson. She's our friend and yours. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to start Thank making you. ice cream. Why not? Basha Cohen up next right here on the Modern Eater Show. Great opening segment, Greg. Holy cow, August 3rd. It's a little toasty in here, but we got it full. Of, there's a lot of energy and a lot of heat. And no one hotter than our friend Elon Hello. Wenzel from Element Knives. Nice to be here. Elon, I hear uh, this is going to be your full-time gig now. This is my full-time job now. 20 years making sushi, and now I'm moving into knives full-time. 20 years? Well, then, you know your knives. Absolutely. And, uh, sh go ahead and show them this knife. So what we have here is my top-selling uh, chef's knife for our home, VG10 with mahogany wood handle, western style, very approachable, easy to get into. And what would that baby set me back? 215 <laughs> Come on, you can do that. If you yeah. want to be the best, you've got to use the best. It's right here, and not only that, buy it from the best. Yep. We love this company. guy. You'll hear about him every week Thank here you. on the Modern Eater. Thank you so much, so much, Elon. Thank you so much. 
Hey, we're going to be right back. We're going to hear some words from our sponsors. Rocker Spirits celebrating their third anniversary Ooh. today. They're having a big party. Yeah. Went down and saw Dustin earlier. And you're going to hear some great words from our, uh, from our uh, first segment of sponsors. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Bye-bye. The latest from NBC News Radio. Hi, folks. Dan Cicchini. Oh, my gosh. How could it be that we started Dunright Home Improvements way back in 1985 already? How could it be that three of our grandkids are now working in the business? Geez, we didn't have grandkids back then. And to think that we've designed, built, and installed tens of thousands of projects? How can that be, Todd? Dad, it's the things you've always taught us. Do good work, show up on time, price fairly, and above all, keep your promises. Our performance speaks for itself. Whether it's kitchens, baths, counters, or floors, or even replacement windows and doors, they have our word we'll treat them right at Dunright. You betcha, Todd. And with the weather like it is and today's incentives, that's right, incentives, now is the time to call and save a full 12% off all services for select install dates. 303-722-2295, 800-362-8370, or drhi.com. 303-722-2295. So what's the deal with Belgian beers? Why are they so popular? Well, for starters, Belgium is a country the size of Maryland that produces more than 800 different beers, the greatest number of original beer styles on the planet. And they are amazing. At Brews Beers, badass Belgian-style beers are our thing, and we do them like no one else. All the classics, like doubles, triples, quads, and wit beers, plus our own Belgian-inspired creations. Sour beers, fruit beers, and wood-aged beers. Brews Beers is at 67th and Pecos in Midtown. We have food trucks daily, or bring in whatever you like, including your dog, who is always welcome inside or outside on our large patio. Check us out on social media or on our website at brewsbeers.com. That's Brews Beers, B-R-U-Z, at 1675 West 67th Avenue, just 10 minutes north of downtown. The place to go for badass Belgian-style beers. Hey, it's Greg Holland back. Any more these days, when I go out to eat, I not only want to eat delicious food and drinks, but I also want to eat where I know my money is going to a local restaurant that I believe in. I believe in The Goods Restaurant on Colfax and Mark Whistler. The Goods is a community restaurant and bar with a menu focusing on vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, and keto options. Comfort food lovers, try the best burger on planet Earth. I love it. Eight ounces of grass-fed beef and never, ever any hormones and antibiotics or steroids the goods is truly a cultural melting pot a family restaurant open to all their bar program is amazing saddle up at their long luxurious bar have a nice craft beer or a cocktail like their facebook page and stay up on amazing events and specials going on throughout the week located on east colfax directly connected to the tattered cover bookstore across from east high school with free parking and a garage in back look them up online thegoodsrestaurant.com I'll see you at the goods. Hey, Colorado. This is Brian Freeman, owner of Growers Organic and a host on the Modern Eater Talk Show. Growers Organic is a Colorado sourcing company who provides Colorado's greatest chefs with the best organic produce. I've been partnering with local and regional farms for the last 20 years, and our returning customers know they can count on us over and over again. Chefs who receive the highest rating on Good Food 100 choose Growers Organic for their organic produce needs because we're experts at bridging the gap between the farm and the table. Join us in the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Wear black and eat spices. Hey, Modern Eater listeners, this is Zach from The Spice Guy, Colorado's favorite spice company. Spice is the variety of life. At The Spice Guy, we have a passion for sourcing the best ingredients from the best farmers all over the world. Choose from thousands of different GMO-free spices and ingredients, or let us create and blend custom flavor profiles for whatever style of food it is that you're working with. With over 1,000 restaurants, food brands, and chefs behind us, you can't go wrong when you choose The Spice Guy for all your spice needs. The Spice Guy. Spicy. Born in Breck, raised in Denver. TheSpiceGuyCo.com. Hey guys, it's Carly Smith, the fairy godmother here. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. I guess you're listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Let's go make some bone broth. Why not? Or ice cream. Yes. <laughs> Let's put some ice cream on. Throw a headset on. Remind me her name, Basha. Alana. 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 Throw a headset on, Alana. So we can hear everybody. Everybody's engaged in the conversation. Lori Mitson continues with us and Basha Cohen, Little Man Ice Cream, and, and many others. We were talking about branding. And uh, Basha, first of all, welcome to the kitchen. Studio Kitchen, Colorado, first time. 
Thank you. It is incredible here. I Kinda love cool. it. Kind of cool. Fun. It's totally cool. As it develops. Um, so, Basha, here we are. We're at the new facility, Little Man. It's your production facility. Correct. Right? And I am a fan of brands. You guys, if you're a fan of brands, put your hand up. Good brands. Good, Woo! solid brands, good brands. You know, that take a while to build and have a good story. And, and you, you're just, you're entrenched into the brand. You know, it's like Kleenex. You know, Little Man to me, it's ice cream. Okay. You know what I mean? I follow you now. And, and so <laughs> with this brand, that you walk in. Don't let me describe it. First of all, your new pro production facility. Kind of describe it. And I think Jay has some B-roll we'll play on the Facebook page as well. Well, we just opened up our Little Man Ice Cream Factory um, about a month ago. And it has started one year ago as our production facility. We were making ice cream in a little teeny tiny granny kitchen over on Tejon Street. Now we can produce 7,000 gallons a week in this new facility that can basically satisfy between 60 and 70 of our new wholesale clients as well as our own um, growth as a brand. 7,000 gallons? Yeah. I can start eating ice cream again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got ice cream for you, for sure. But uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful shop. Not only now do we have our back of house, which is our spin space where we make the ice cream and a bakery where all of the baked goods that go into it and daily factory specials, but now we also have opened up the front of house, which is called the flight deck. And we basically deliver um, ice cream from the spin space on a, uh, on a um, conveyor, belt. conveyor belt. Thank you very much, Alana. Um, that was repurposed from an old dry cleaner. So it very much looks like an old factory with a lot of um, things that are built on the round in order to kind of create the inner workings of what an ice cream uh, churn looks like. An ice cream movie needs to be made in there. Oh, yeah. Just immediately. I think you're right. <laughs> Let's it's do it. It's so cool. Lori, I can't wait to get your feedback when you go in there. I'm out. just, like, eyeballing the ice cream that's <laughs> next <laughs> to me. You should see all the flavors and all well, the toppings. What are we going to make? Uh, we are going to make a super-duper Big Man Scooper. Uh, this is a Sunday that's exclusive to the factory location at West Colfax and Tennyson. Now, um, you, if you're watching this, you can go get it. Right? Oh, right? I mean, this is on the menu. It's on the wall. You can go get it. So that I was just going to ask, Basha, your new location is retail and manufacturing, right? Correct. So, Correct. And that's your third location, right? Because you have... actually our fifth. Fifth. And we will be opening our sixth very soon in Park Hill. So... Congratulations. We, wow. Yeah, we are really, really excited. We made a very conscientious decision about three or four years ago when we knew that we wanted to expand Little Man Ice Cream. We said, should we just take the can and replicate that across America or across Colorado? Or do we really want to not be known as the golden arches of ice cream and really create independent shops with their own attitude and positioning within each neighborhood? And that's the path that we chose. And now it's kind of an interesting intersection between understanding that it's all part of the little man company, but each shop has its own independent view. So... Sweet Cooey's in Congress Park. Hey, hold on. Yeah. Let's, let's test Lori. Lori, okay. do you know what? any of them? The other I, ones besides honestly, Little Man. I completely tuned you out because oh. I'm just, I, I'm fixated. <laughs> honestly. I love how she's so real. Can you name, really, I'm fixated. Can you name any of the other Little Man projects? I mean, maybe uh, Yeah, not. there's one in Stapleton. Uh-huh. Um, there's the original one, obviously, that's yep. in Low High. Yeah. Um, and obviously the new one that she was talking about that Sweet I have Cooey. not been to yet. Sweet, yep. Coo Sweet Cooey is absolutely brilliant. It's beautiful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it so is we're missing absolutely one, beautiful. Aren't we? What's the other here, one? Here, here's your passport to happiness. Oh, so we just oh. started this wonderful campaign where you can get a passport at any one of our shops. And you get if you get four out of five stamps between now and Labor Day, you basically get a chance to win ice cream, free ice cream for a year. And we'll <gasps> be doing that at all five nice. locations. So, well, we're, and you get to buy one, get one free when you, uh, after you get your first stamp. So that's pretty cool. Does that come with the gym membership? Uh, it's it should. Win it, <laughs> and a personal trainer. <laughs> we believe in, uh, you know, healthy living and enjoying yourself as well. Well, your mind has to be healthy is what I would say. And ice cream really makes your mind healthy for me. I agree with you. <laughs> well, you know, and the good okay. point, too, because we were inside the uh, factory and you look around. And you can't help, number one, just transcending back to a kid. You know, you're, you're there. The nostalgia. But, yeah, wonderful. absolutely. But yeah. also, have what you ever nostalgia. seen somebody pissed off eating ice cream? 
No. <laughs> well, oh, yes. I have seen little, yes. kids little kids cry <laughs> while they yeah, eat it. Absolutely. Especially or when, when they drop it. <laughs> and when they drop it, like when yeah. they get the cone, There's and all of a sudden uh, it goes boom. <laughs> and then there's like this huge whale. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And mom and dad has to run in and get another one. And if you're at Bonnie Bray ice cream, for example, you have to stand in line for half an hour. And the little <laughs> kid is so pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like my little kid was like that. He was. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, usually yeah. when they have the ice cream, they're just fine. They're calmed down at that point in time. So funny story. Great I'm, bribery. I want to tell a story about, uh, you know, when people actually, so I want to ask who orders this? And <laughs> and so I do want to, it's 630 on 630 How an iHeart radio station, our flagship station. We're on Facebook Live as well. Check it out, the Modern Eater page. Uh, we've got Bashi Cohen here and Alana. Is that correct? Yes. Assembling this delicious. Uh, now, th- is this a banana split? I don't think it is. No. Um, actually, what we do basically when someone does order a super duper big man scooper, the primary question is, do you have any allergies? And then we just kind of load it up with 10 different lar- uh, small size scoops of ice cream. Uh, I pretty much hand over the topping list to the guest and ask, which one of these do you want? Which one of these that you don't? Um, we also add extra bonus toppings that aren't available on normal Sundays. Like we have full-size lollipops, chocolate-dipped Pocky, uh, Pop and Boba Pearls. We have crushed pieces of uh, our house-made brownies and cookies that we sell at the bakery as well. Um, but, yeah, we just, like, load it up with whatever your heart desires. This so, Alana, if they say... My, I'm allergic to dairy. Do you say go home, or do you do you have something hit the, hit the something rocks. for yeah. them well, too? <laughs> you're in luck because we actually always consider to carry um, two sorbets and two uh, dairy-free vegan option flavors as well. So awesome. Awesome. we have really thought about the entire market and want to make sure to accommodate anyone who wants to come in and enjoy a dessert. Yeah, well, tell the story awesome, about the guy who came in. To Wait, get hold this on. The other That's day. a great break point. <laughs> oh yes, yes. <laughs> We got it. We got to tease out. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about the uh, factory, the production so- facility, and all that they have to offer. And also, um, this story is so much fun, Brian. But here's the thing: ice cream before dinner tonight. Yes, gonna every night. Tonight. I think it should happen. And it, it, here's the thing about ice cream: it's going to melt, so you have to eat it yeah. quickly. <laughs> so we're going to bust out. I don't know, 20 spoons. There's probably 20, That's 25 people in here. We'll get them around the table during the break, and we're just going to destroy this huge Sunday right here and eat it like it's supposed to be eaten. Fast, did a nice furious. Job. <laughs> and uh, we'll come back and tell this story and talk about Little Man some more. Uh, Dan Witherspoon, top of the hour, Chef Dan Witherspoon. We're going to talk about his cookbook and uh, Distillery 291 here as well. So we've got a great uh, rest of the show for you. So we'll be back in a flash right here at Studio Kitchen, Colorado. You are listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. Another great segment, Greg. For once, though, I wish I was up on the table to enjoy some of that ice cream. Holy cow. Hey, we're we're over here in the corner. I've got Rocky, our friend Rocky. She's going to be cooking up some stuff that we're going to be showing and enjoying later. But Rocky, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you working at? I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to meet you. I'm running a small butcher shop called The Juniper Pig. It's a family marketplace. We're sourcing Mm -hmm. from local small farms who don't have really the power to get out to market. And so that's what I'm carrying, some happy cow, good life flavor, beautiful beef. And it's called the Juniper Pig. It's called the Juniper Pig at the Stanley Market. In conjunction, I'm starting my own Mexican business. Oh my gosh. This girl's got a lot going on. Stay tuned, keep an eye on her because I saw her whipping up some stuff that looks pretty incredible. It's all right, but when you taste it, it'll be great. Oh, I know, it's going to be fantastic. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Stay tuned, keep an eye on her, and stay tuned. We've got some words from some of our best sponsors. we got Crush, the ACF, Arden Mills, and Aspen Baking coming up in just a few seconds. We'll be back. Woo! It's a guy here, Jason McGovern, with Crush Pizza and Tap right here in Denver, Colorado. With your help, let's make pizza great again. Come into Crush Pizza and Tap for our award-winning pizza, wings, and local beer. But we're serving up three styles of pizza for you to crush. Dig into our Chicago deep dish with sauce on top of the cornmeal crust. And don't forget about our Sicilian, that's right, with cheesy crisp edges and that soft, soft crust. Don't forget about America's pizza. How could you do that? Crush Pizza and Taps Hand Tossed Pizza will take your taste buds back, back, back to that neighborhood pizzeria you loved as a kid. 
You like deals? Come in and mention the Modern Eater and get a buy one, get one free on our hand-tossed pizzas any day of the week. Man, that's good. Lastly, don't forget to crush our award-winning smoked wings. They're a little rich approved and loved by everyone. Crush Pizza and Taps conveniently located at 1200 West 38th Avenue, just minutes from downtown. Come and crush pizza with us. We've been making pizza great again since 2012. It's Crush. Live in one minute. We're with the Colorado Chefs Association. You've probably heard the excitement. This year, we are creating a stir in the culinary community. This is your personal invitation to join us on our constant culinary adventure. Let us open up our network to you and help you grow professionally. Whether you are a chef, purveyor, brewer, baker, we are here to build your brand, your business, and connect you with Colorado's culinary community. Join us. I'd love to hear from you. Email me, Colleen, at acfcoloradochefs.org. Want to bake the best? Bake with the best. Little Rich here from Rock Elite 30. and The Modern Eater. Our wraps fold cold and don't break open. Yes, sir. And delicious. What's my secret? Ardent Mills. Organic, ancient, and You're good to go with it? Yeah. More. Headquartered in Denver, Colorado, Ardent Mills provides the industry's broadest range of traditional and organic flours, whole grains, customized blends, and specialty products dedicated to the culinary industry with the next grains and unique plant-based ingredients. I love Five, four, three, you're hot. Dot com. Okay, back to uh, Studio Kitchen and Little Man Ice Cream. Momentarily, everybody's digging into this delicious. Gosh, I love it, man. Oh, I love to goodness. see this. Yeah, Brian, what's the temperature out right now? Um, I'm going to say, you know, probably, what, about 84 degrees it's down here in Denver? Not enough to enjoy some delicious ice cream. Okay, Aspen Baking Company. Here's the deal. Aspen Baking Company, proud sponsor of the Modern Eater Show, but even more over, we're so proud to have them on the spo- as a sponsor because they're the best of the best. Now, Hollis Casey and uh, Cody Ann Lacatour, these gals are going to take care of you, whether it's on the bread side or the sandwich side right so they offer two different things but i'd encourage you if you i always say a sandwich is only as good as its bread brian and aspen baking company they're local they bake delicious breads artisans uh pastries and their breads themselves but uh, explore all of the options by going to aspenbaking.com you can order direct Here's the deal. They have delivery trucks, Brian, just like you at Growers. They're sending out all this bread. Because they deliver fresh bread every day. Every single day. And you can sign up. Just click on the Prospective Clients tab on their website and just fill out that form, and you'll be locked and loaded to get that fresh, delicious bread to your location. A really cool aspect is their new order box lunches. They've got the Mount Evans box. They've got the Maroon Bells box. They've got their grab-and-go boxes. It includes a sandwich, a wrap, a salad. Your choice of sides includes uh, chips and pasta or a cookie. You throw that in there. But they're grab-and-goes. Brewers, a lot of brewers listen to this show. Your brewery needs to have food. And this way, with inconsistent food trucks and those types of things, this is a no-brainer. I would hit them up at aspenbaking.com. Check out your options and either Hollis or Cody Ann is going to get back to you. Again, so proud to have these guys on board. It's Aspen Baking. Yo, yo, what's up? <laughs> this is Justin Brunson, Ultra Meat and Cheese in Denver Central Market. I'm a meat guy. You got me. You're listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Right. Yes, you are, Chef Brunson. He'll be wrapping up the summer dinner series on August 20th. Um, for burning down the house with Chef Justin Brunson. Can't wait to have him in here. Actually, there, there's a dinner left. Uh, to, no, get to, out of here. No, so, so check it out. Next, or Brother Lux dinner, sold out. Sold out, yep. Right? A couple of weeks from now is going to be the ACF Colorado Chefs Association dinner. Uh, that's getting close to being sold out. Oh, that's yeah, going to be go seven chefs <coughs> cooking for 30 people. And a chef's table It's going to be so cool. Go get your tickets, summerdinnerseries.com. Also, the last dinner <coughs> uh, the last dinner is going to be Chef Justin Brunson. There's five tickets left. Go grab yours, Summer Dinner Justin Series. still has tickets left. That's amazing. It is amazing. But I think people, Denver's one of those towns. We're last minute, man. Last we minute, are last yeah. minute. All my, my ticket broker buddies say that, man. Oh, don't worry. Don't buy a ticket. I'll hook you up right the day before the show. Hey, did you notice nobody cares about the show anymore? They just care about this delicious this ice cream. Sunday. <laughs> Basha, Lonnie, you guys, I'm, truly, this, this is the real stuff right here. And ice cream, again, if you don't like ice cream, I don't trust you. I think some people just can't have ice cream, but they'll go with the coconut milk 
soccer at all. What? No, What's like wrong that. with you? There's What's a, wrong with them? There's a brand out Figure there. Figure that out. So delicious. It has a coconut. I'll eat that. But I'll eat this first. Bashiko and Alana rejoining us on the show. This story. Jay, you got to get in on this story. Because you would be one of those guys that would feel guilty doing it. But um, well, first of all, would you order one of these to yourself? You think you could eat that whole thing, Jay? Uh, I could. Yes. 4 a.m. I have seen this, man. Yeah. You know. I mean, there, I couldn't do it out in public like this guy did, you know, unless I had a few libations, which obviously I'm not going to have. But I could do that at home. No problem. So this is like a Bigfoot sighting. If you're if you're not on our Facebook uh, on our Facebook, throw that on, Lori. She's enjoying some. Uh, <laughs> she's like, no, I libations beer. I told you it's settle, in between me and the oh. ice cream. She says she's I like, what? Thought, I told you, settle Sorry. in nicely, right, Lori? <laughs> Feeling good? All right. Um, I know. I just ghosted you though for the banana. Or everybody, the, the ice cream boat. Absolutely, everybody's <laughs> attention you can went understand. straight to the ice cream. I know. So this is like a Bigfoot sighting because I still don't believe it. It's like an. <laughs> It's an urban legend or something at this point. But legend has it. Yeah. There's a guy who walked into Little Man Ice Cream Factory. Take it from there. Well, um, to date, we've been open exactly four weeks from today. Um, and so far, we've only sold one or two super duper big man scoopers. But our first was actually just sold about a week or two ago on a Friday night. We had a guest come in about 10 minutes before close and um they didn't he, even get mad at that first off that's yeah. an anomaly he, in itself <laughs> which i'm starting to think the story doesn't add up after all these <laughs> two. we'll just go with it though but uh this guy came in 10 minutes before close and he just said i want the biggest sunday that you offer and we we're like okay it's 50 dollars. we load it up with whatever you want what allergies do you have and he was like no allergies. I just don't want any of that vegan stuff. So as long as you don't give me that, <laughs> and you tone that good. down a little bit, but yeah. right, yeah, we're on the radio. We're on the radio. Um, but uh, yeah, he like we just handed him the topping list, scooped him up all of his ice cream, and not even five minutes after we closed, he had polished that thing off and ran out the door before I could get a picture with him. <laughs> How about but the fact that his girlfriend, she had to have her own. That's very he true. Share. He wouldn't share at all. He <laughs> said, everyone else in my group is getting their own ice cream. This whole Sunday is just for me. Okay, 10 minutes before close, one guy did it, no photos. Did it happen? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, hey, listen, I think you live in Colorado and stuff like that. I think we have food hurricanes happen where people go in and devour everything in a restaurant. Yeah. I can see it. I have seen it. I've done that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. I, I mean, small, yeah. tidy menus, obviously. <laughs> yeah, not, not like yeah, the multi small pages, but yeah. Oh, in my 20s, but, yeah. I would eat a pint Tacos? every night for Right before bed. Oh, it was terrible. I, Ice cream, yeah, now, every night. Jay, pint. Can, can we make I'm funny on, for a minute? Yeah, yeah, I'm on. Well, listen, I'll just get this out of the way. I'm on at least half a pint uh, every night. But here's the thing. I've had to move on to um, terrible ice the, the 300 calories per pint ice cream because of how much I consume. You, you know, it's like I would love to eat the little man, but, and no offense to little man, but there's probably more than three, you know, 300 calories per there's pint. There's a lot of air in that ice cream. So, so I, it, I mean, it tastes like Not sawdust, but I, you know, I, whatever. But that's where I'm at. But make fun of me. That's well, the I'm hard thing is, is you've got to realize Jay does not like exercise. Jay thinks that exercise is something that the devil created. Wow. Um. Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, I don't, I, no, I don't think that exercise is something the devil created. Now, listen, exercise isn't for me in the traditional sense of, like, I'm going here to lift weight. That's not who I am as, as a, just a soul, yeah. right? But, but exercise as far as doing this show and bartending and things, like I enjoy that. But do you like you walking not, around the lake? Do you take a nice, slow walk around the lake in the if afternoon? If I can get something out of it. When was the last time you got on your bike and rode around the neighborhood? That's not his exercise. Uh, you said. <laughs> Emptying trash. <laughs> Yeah, I like to get my exercise in the form of like of actually, and dare I say, accomplishing something. You know, it'd be like, you know, playing tennis. You know, I enjoy tennis, but I don't. But if I did enjoy <laughs> tennis, I would play tennis for the exercise and be like, oh, this is fun, and I get exercise. You know, but like to just go walk, like take a hike because it's exercise and you can see clouds. I'm not into that. No. But, but, and that's but clouds. That's but clouds. Uh, or the mountains. I've seen them before. Back to Basha. <laughs> Basha, let's get a couple minutes in on what's happening production-wise and what, what your offerings are at the factory. All right. Well, we uh, have basically 16 flavors out um, every day, so that's a rotating palette of things. We obviously have 
chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry because those are always our top sellers, regardless of the fact that salted Oreo put us on the map. And now we have a salted peanut butter caramel. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about some of our other great flavors, purple cow. Um, yeah, Purple Cow and Space Junkie are two really big flavors that sell for us really well. Um, both are going to have a black raspberry base. The Purple Cow, which we actually featured in our Super Duper Big Man Scooper today, uh, is the black raspberry base with dark and white chocolate chips. Uh, Space Junkie, which we also offer as an ice cream cake for retail sale at the factory, is going to be a black raspberry base with homemade brownie pieces and a marshmallow swirl. Are um, you a real person? Wow, I know. You real. look like you were made to do what you're doing right now. Uh, you love it. You're yes, I didn't even realize until I started working for Little Man that my dream job is to sell ice cream. So I'm just in my happy place every day. S real quick, <laughs> we've got to go to break, but yes. same question for both of you. What's your favorite flavor? Right now, I would say it's probably the espresso fudge. We <laughs> use local Ozo coffee, um, and we make our own coffee extract and add a fudge swirl. It's delicious. Okay, Basha, you're uh, on the hot seat. Mine is lemon, no, no, lemon lavender poppy Ooh, no. sorbet. Yes. That's Ooh. great. Ooh. How, how come I when I was that. a kid, there were it was just it, the biggest variety is like the Neapolitan brand that your grandma had that was in she yeah, just yeah strawberry chocolate <laughs> vanilla. I mean, well, I, and thirds. I mean, people couldn't think this up but years ago, you know. To well, make that's back when people were really linear. Yeah, yeah very, very conservative yeah. upbringing. Yeah, right, to, you know, yeah. I mean, come on. And then you got we're in the Bible Belt. I think. I <laughs> come think, on. Now. I think it was uh, you know, chocolate or it was um, the Oreo cookie is what you would get. You know, that fire. was new. That yeah, was that novel. was real. That was, yeah, yeah, that was like that was but the, the space galaxy that they have now. That, I think that Rocky Road might have been the gateway. Oh, that was my father's oh, favorite. Yeah. Rocky Road. Yeah. Yeah. How about your favorites? I like sorbet um, more than I like ice cream. To be honest with you, I yeah. love like apple sorbet. I love fruit forward sorbets. Yeah. Um, and I like blackberry, and I love like I, I love cherry ice cream. Yeah. And during Palisade peach Ooh. season, which is kind of where we're at uh -huh, right now, yep. that's what I'm really, really looking forward to is Palisade peach nice. ice cream. Um, yeah. There's a rumor that the Modern Eater may go do a show exclusively at Little oh. Man, which would be cool. Hopefully you could join oh, us there yeah. for that. Um, do you do a green tea? We, we have a matcha tea. Do we have a green tea as well? Uh, just the matcha, um, but we also use a local honey purveyor for our matcha honey flavor. It's actually exclusive to the location Old Town Churn in Fort Collins, but we use a local Iandol gel alfalfa honey um, for our matcha honey. It's also going to be one of our featured in one of our seasonal flavors for August, which is our honey almond. We also use that Iandol honey for our homemade uh, graham crackers. So that's really wow, great. They're too. doing it right. Yeah. I'm telling you. Gotta little, love it. Little man ice cream. Go down to the new location. That is at well, go to Kipling and Col yeah. Col no, 40, Colfax. Uh, 4411 West Colfax, which is between okay. Tennyson and Utica. So even closer. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I grew up right around there. Awesome. Yeah. We talked about that yeah. a little bit. Her old stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in to see. I think everybody's going to want to go see it. I really appreciate mm -hmm. you gals' time. Thank you so much oh, for having so us. so cool. Thank all you right. for feeding all of us. I know the ice cream. <laughs> Hey, Did a little ice pleasure. cream dance. <laughs> and I don't know you how you can say that. What is it? The big man scooper? Super big duper big man scooper. How do you not say poop? Poop. I was just, oh, my God. You took, I've been wanting to ask that for the past 15 minutes. You're like, it's not my show. I'm not going there. <laughs> not, it's go food there. we're talking about. But I'm every time you said, I'm like, pooper, pooper, she's, she's pooper. Got it, it, it took yeah. a lot of mental Awareness. remembering. Yeah. yeah. I, for definitely the first two weeks, yeah. you wanted to call it that. Go, so. go get you one. That's what I say. Yeah. I'm going down for the pooper. Absolutely <laughs> delicious. I mean, why not? So <laughs> good. All right, we'll be back. Chef Brother Luck, he'll be on phone with us next on the Modern Eater Show. Thanks, Greg. Man, all that ice cream, this is a size scoop I want to use. <laughs> Something like this. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think so. Is okay, there a bigger one? <laughs> uh, if there was, I'd have got it. I'd have got it. Okay, we're in the corner. we got a few seconds. I'm with my friend Big Mike yep. and Cowboy Phil <laughs> and Little Rich. They're from 291 Distillery down in Colorado Springs. Regular guests here. These guys are awesome. Uh, you, what would you bring tonight? I brought uh, 291 Colorado Rye Whiskey. Hold on, let me show this. Oh, look at that. Oh, my That's God. And uh, Philip's making a cocktail with it. 
So we're doing a rye old fashion. It's uh, been passed around the room a couple times, so I think everyone's enjoying it. That's why everyone's so laugh laughing so hard tonight, <laughs> because of these guys. Well, stay tuned. They're going to be on in just a little bit. We are. And you're part of the Tuesday Summer Dinner Series this we week. We are. We are uh, with Brother Luck this week, so it'll be a lot of fun. Colorado Springs is in the house, so oh, watch out. Colorado Springs is <laughs> happening, man. And I tell you what, that dinner's already sold out, so bring a lot of this. We will. Bring a lot of this, and hopefully we can have some of that uh, ice cream for dessert on that night. Amazing. Well, thanks, guys. Thank we'll be you. seeing more of these guys in just a little bit. Stay tuned. We'll be right back to listen to some words from some of our best sponsors. This is why all homes purchased with Rex come with a 30-day buyback guarantee. That's 30 days after close to make sure the home you bought is the home you love. If you don't like it, Rex will buy back your home at the price you paid. Call 833-REX-HOME. That's 833-739-4663. Home buying can be a pain. Buyers have to run all over the place to get their home, get their insurance, get their mortgage. What a hassle. A Rex agent will do all of that for you with a buyer bundle. And Rex can get your purchase qualified for a 50% rebate of the agent commission. Since 2017, buyers using this bundle have received an average of $9,300 in cash prior to closing. Savings and security. Brought to you by Rex. Call 833-REX-HOME, 833-739-4663. License number 10007-7876. Exclusion supply to buyer rebate. Hey, it's Greg Holland back for Gluten-Free Things. Are you intolerant or sensitive to gluten? Or maybe you're a gluten-free lifestyler? Is your menu limited because you've eliminated gluten from your diet? Are you missing the taste of foods that traditionally contain gluten? What if I told you? that you can add breads, pizzas, muffins, cakes, cookies, waffles, croissants, English muffins, the list goes on right back to your menu. Gluten-Free Things is a local gluten-free and vegan bakery that reintroduces you to the foods you love. Owner John Irvin believes gluten-free shouldn't taste like the box that it's packaged in. Trust me when I tell you the products from his bakery in Arvada are fresh, flavorful, and masterly crafted, leaving you with a product that tastes like the real thing. Simply delicious. The bakery is located in Arvada on 64th and Sims across the street from Arvada West High School. Check out their website at glutenfreethings.com. You'll be amazed with the variety of gluten-free products they make. And chefs, don't leave your gluten-free restaurant guests without options. Contact John at info at glutenfreethings.com. That's info at glutenfreethings.com to see what he can do for you. Give him a shot. 11651 West 64th Avenue in Arvada. It's gluten free things. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rock. Live in one. Rockalitas, known for hyper local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you too want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Yeah, I just called in twice, three times actually. Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey, it's Chef Elon Wenzel, owner of Element Knife Company. If you cook, then you'll know the importance of a quality knife and proper care. My training in Japan exposed me to exceptional cutlery. That's why I am so excited to offer you the knives I fell in love with. Element Knife Company is chef-driven, and my goal is to support and educate. Get Ten to the left. Conversation. Find me at elementknife.com or by simply calling 303 -4 -4 -3. Element Knife Company. Okay, we're heading to in the kitchen momentarily here, and uh, brother, brother Luck, we're, we're on standby for him. He's in a busy kitchen, Brian. Sometimes stuff happens, man. This is live. Sometimes you've got to cook, and you can't be on the show, yeah. but we're hoping to catch up with Brother Luck because he's got a very important message that he wants to tell us all. Uh, but right now, Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, that time of year, Brian, I'm saying it. You know, you limp through the summertime. You didn't, Don't limp through the summertime. You, 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 Don't make that excuse. You Stop did, it. You did not have what you needed to be the expert griller or smoker in your backyard, and you weren't impressing your friends and your family or anybody else, but there's no reason why you should do that. You know why? Because you have partners. You have friends. They're local on 25th and Federal. It's Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Dan Casey, 
and you've got our uh, these all the, the whole lineup Frank Dominguez Dan Chris Tony these guys are going to make sure they answer all your needs. They're going to sell you anything that you want, or if you don't want anything at all, they're just going to make sure they're there for you. How much knowledge about barbecues do you think oh, they have? They, more than you'll ever know. That's they'll, right. They'll forget That's right. more than you'll ever know. Or me. That's what I like to hear. Um, the authorities on it, go check out their website, ProudSoulsBBQ.com. ProudSoulsBBQ.com. I'd say sign up for a class. If you want to sharpen your game up, Brian. I do. I do. Then ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Click on classes. It'll show you their classes. We went to the rib class, Jay and I. I learned a lot. There were fun people there. Do you think it helped you? It was a great time. Yeah. Did you learn something to take away? Well, you know, because we have their green egg in the kitchen you watch us grill on. You also watch us on that yoder. But these guys will give you equipment, but they're not going to leave you high and dry. They're going to tell you how to use it. ProudSoulsBBQ.com, that's your ticket, or just drop by. It's 25th and Federal, Proud Souls. Feed me now. This is the Modern Eater Show. That's right, boy. Uh, I'm and now it's time for In the Kitchen. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? Brought to you by Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Award-winning competition cooks and purveyors of specialty barbecue supplies right here in Denver, Colorado. ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Feed me all night long. All right, we may not be able to catch up with Brother Luck, but we sure will on uh, Tuesday night when he comes in Storm Studio Kitchen for a pop-up dinner summer dinner series and summer dinner series.com you can't come to this one but next year if you see brother luck's name pop up with the modern eater get your tickets quick because that's sold out in a matter of moments well i know wasn't it interesting when someone came on our website and said hey how can i get a ticket for brother luck and you just wanted to say you gotta wait till next year and by the way plan sooner yeah. You got to get it, get in here. And uh, what what's been your favorite? We're halfway through the summer dinner series. I it's like picking a kid, Brian. Which one's your favorite kid that you have? Oh, definitely always a firstborn man. <laughs> <laughs> Tovery, if you see that, don't don't let that go to your head. Yeah, son. you owe me something. <laughs> I don't know. Your daughter's adorable. Out of oh, my little nature. Coco, she's a yeah, sweetheart. But oh, the, but Quinny. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, but there have been some dishes at this summer dinner series that I. Beyond, we I mean, we, we're out around. Uh, we're you know we're shaking hands and kissing babies. I was the most Losing. surprised around Carly. I'll tell you, I thought her food just. I took. By the way, I had some leftovers the other night, and I made some cauliflower and put her carrot. Remember that carrot ginger soup that she made? Oh man! With a little bit I, of pesto I think in we it. We lost oh. Lori for the. <laughs> it's the ice cream. She's, she's like, I'm out. Two ninety one whiskey. She's consumed by the kitchen. Lori, I think we have 50 seconds left in this hour, but we are coming up on Dan Witherspoon. We are. Yeah. Momentarily. Yeah. Can you say, what are we about to eat? Do you know? It looks like the spicy, I think the, the bison meatballs. Right there in this cookbook that everybody needs to have. Yeah. The Italian sausage, braised fennel, peppers, and Roma tomatoes. Oh, I can't wait to show that off. That's going to be good. Chef it Dan looks delicious. Witherspoon. He's a great chef, and he does a lot for this community. If you haven't heard about him, you're going to catch his story up next, and we're going to use some delicious Rome sausage for this um, recipe, which is All the really sausage cool. is gone. He had a whole plate full. And it's already and gone. And everybody <laughs> picked it off. We've got folks that are hungry. How much time do we have back there, Jared? I don't have a clock in front of me. Ten seconds. All right. Well, Ten just seconds. perfect then. That's perfect. So Chris Johnson, Rome Sausage, and Chef Dan Witherspoon's coming up next. Stick around. Second hour. We'll continue right here on the Modern Eater Show. Thanks, Greg. Woo! We got some time here to talk to one of our favorites. <laughs> and as soon as I'm done talking to Chris, we'll get him on. That's no. Right. Right. Who is it? <laughs> no. Nice. no, Chris from Rome's. You're awesome, brother. What's happening over at Rome's? What's new? Well, it's a grind over there, right? Come on, man. Come on. I wouldn't have expected no, anything no. less. It's all, it's all jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, we're just, uh, it's been a good summer for us so far. Been, been super, super busy. Had a, a great May and June, and uh, just kind of winding down before the kids start school and, and back at it. So, uh, yeah, it's been good. Been a good, good summer. So. Summer went like this. You know what? Totally. So I'm, I'm going to grab some. I'm going to run off camera and grab something because I want our viewers to see this. Good. Hold on. Here he comes. Yeah, buddy. Okay, I want you guys at home to see... These are Rome's 
meatballs. meatballs right? I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to go there. No. I'm not going to go no, there. But look jokes. at these. This jokes. was. This is heat and serve. It is a heat and serve. How, how long item. did this take to to heat? Uh, 10, 12 minutes in the oven. You know, this, this is my dad's recipe uh, growing up. So we awesome. got my entire family here. My, my sister and and uh, her husband and brother and, and his wife, and they've enjoyed these for a long time. And it's really cool to have nostalgic. Uh, thing to take an heirloom item to market. So we're, we're all real proud of this and it's a nice compliment to the sausage obviously and we're, we're excited about it. So. The flavor profile on this, what are the meats that are in this? What's so in this? So it's pork and beef. We're okay. whole, whole muscle pork and beef in bowl. Uh, we're hand mixing the spices as always and we actually hand roll those. So it's a very kind of hands-on, small batch, boutique style thing. So. And you're doing these by hand? By right? hand, yep. yep. Oh my god, I tell you, I had a bite of one right? and the mouthfeel, it's, it's got that nice chew it's not right. tough. Sure. Uh, you can tell it hasn't been like machine pressed. Right. It's got a right. nice, uh, rich, fatty uh, taste yeah, fatty to it. Feels, but, so yeah, to but yeah, but I mean, yeah. but I mean, it's well balanced. Thank this you. is awesome. That. Thank you. We, um, For heat and serve, you got to yep. be kidding me. Yep. Super proud of that item, and um, you know, we, we like to, to keep the, the loose texture, like you're talking about, yeah. as far as a, a good bite to it, without being like a Look at hardened, these. This emulsified, is awesome. like like baseball, right? We want, we want to enjoy eating that. So yeah, it's we're. Super proud of that, and, and, oh my and uh, God. the new item for us. So I'm going to hit the streets hard. And so, who's is anyone carrying these yet? No, I made those yesterday in the, in the plan. So they're oh they're my brand, gosh, fresh off the press, man. Oh my gosh. So if I want to start carrying these, or I'm interested because I've got no labor, Call I need consistency. Call me. Where where do we reach? I'm going to go put this on the yep, table yep, because it's burning the yep. heck out of my hands. Absolutely, hand. absolutely. <laughs> A <laughs> couple ways to source that. Rich, you want to be just calling us directly, 303-296-7663. Okay, wait a minute, wait. My, my pen ran out of ink. What is that number again? 303-296-7663. Okay. Or shoot me an email at chris at romesausage.com. That's I'll get awesome. You, away. Yeah. you got a winner there. Hey, you got a winner there. That. Thank you. So, I mean, uh, you know it, winners, man, so I, I, that's high praise. <laughs> that's right. High I, well, praise a little rich. Man. Well, you know, I, we have our moments. Yeah, we have our moments. Absolutely. No, I'm telling you, if you want to be consistent and if, you, if you're a caterer, if you're a totally. hotelier, um, I mean, that's, that's the easy way to go. Absolutely. You know, we're not going to replace, you know, a, a scratch kitchen meatball, you know, who's making, you know, their heirloom recipe too. But, you know, we know we've got a very, very good meatball, you know, outstanding that's price incredible. aggressively. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great kind of... Um, you know, meatball, it's going to fit a lot of menus and, and take a lot of men Italian place, catering, oh, anything. Hotels, yeah. You know, all of us in, in this industry right now, because we're all show, so short staffed, right. we have to pick our battles. Totally. And if that's a thing, if that's something that I can outsource, right. that, okay, I don't have to have my crew on that, right. and they're going to be fantastic, that's the way to go. Totally. And, you know, what I'm hearing in restaurants every day, it used to be, you know, food cost was the issue. And now labor, to me, oh, absolutely. labor is the biggest issue. Just trying to trying yeah. to find and keep quality guys, yeah. quality guys and gals who are you know like-minded, want to work clean, yeah, work efficiently, and, and work hard. And I think yeah. um, we're looking to kind of fill that fill that niche. Well, unlike unlike a lot of our health these days, if I order 20 cases of those a day, it's going to show up every day on time. Absolutely, absolutely. We aim to please, and I think you know something to be said for a for a small batch. You know, sauce or meatball company, as far as like, hey, look, this is the same size bat you're gonna make in your restaurant. We're just doing it on an industrial scale, you know, and then it's like I said, hand, hand mix the spices, hand over the meatballs, it's, it's the same as you doing it on your own. But, wow! Uh, possibly much better. Any of our viewers, I, I'm not. I'm I'm pulling this one out because it's it's got to. I'm gonna tell you, you've got to call Chris and try this. Thank you. I appreciate that. Th this is something incredible, and you're gonna be ahead of the curve. Absolutely. Be the first. Be the first. That's awesome. So what else is happening at Rome? I mean, God, you've got uh, any new sausages? Yeah, no, I mean, outside of the meatballs, has been kind of our, our focus the last, last month or so to kind of get those get those to market and get the recipe squared away. And like I said, it was my dad's recipe. And a lot of times you get a recipe from a family member. It's like, hey, it's a pinch of this, a pinch of that. So we kind of had to, like, you know, scale it appropriately. So yeah. spent a lot of time on that. And then the other, other you know, part of our day is just... You know, taking care of the folks that we have now and, and making That's good awesome. sausage. So. Now, I, a question for you. How are those packed? Uh, we do a 12-pound case on those. Loose, okay. loose packed, frozen, okay. and fully cooked. And about how many how many meatballs is that? There's about 36 in a case. I knew you would know exactly. Yeah. And there's the thing, too. like it's a So each one of those is a third of a pound? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and the oh good thing God. about us, too, is like, hey, if you, I need a, a four-ounce meatball, you need a six-ounce meatball, we can just a matter of playing with the machine to get it to get it right. So we, we're happy to do custom stuff, too. Small, big, cooked, Wow, cooked, wow. So we're, 
we're, we're getting after it, man. Well, like usual, you heard it here first. That's right. From the man, Hi, not from me. You're the man. Thank you so much, Appreciate Chris. Thanks for you, your help, brother. Out, Great bro. to see you. We'll be right back. Do you love hyper-local food and beverage? If the answer is yes, you'll want to tune in to Colorado's premier food and drink show Saturday starting at 6 p.m. right here on KHOW. And don't forget, past shows can be heard on TheModernEater.com. It's been another crazy year for Colorado weather, and thousands of homes have been damaged by huge hailstorms. Many folks have been waiting to replace their roof until summer's over. Well, now's the time to get on the schedule. Roof Corp has been replacing roofs in the Denver area for over 20 years and would love to help you. A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. Insurance approved and factory certified. Roof Corp is the name to trust. This 30. Today at roofingexperts.com or call 303-548-5000. Ask Alexa to play 630K How on iHeartRadio. Then you can hear Tom Martino get you the help you need. Weekdays 10 to 1. Getting 630K How from iHeartRadio. If Denver's talking about it, you'll hear it on 630K How. The following is a paid advertisement. The opinions, viewpoints, and promises made during the following program are not those of KHOW, its staff, management, or parent company, iHeartMedia Incorporated. How about a bite to eat? It's time for the second course, hour number two of The Modern Eater. What are you hungry for? Here's to a meal we're all here for. Delicious and tasty. Now we're getting to the good stuff. With your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. Hi, you better believe it. Here it is, hour number two of The Modern Eater show, which I love. I love hour number two. You you kind of get in that zone. You get in the crease. Uh, Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman, Jay Parker, Dave Avery's gone tonight, Little Rich Schneider, of course, you've heard. All's well in the world as we uh, set sail on this second hour from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. We're in the middle of uh, week six of Summer Dinner Series, and can't wait to see Brother Luck in the kitchen cooking on Tuesday night. That'll be a treat. Uh, Chris, you'll be here, won't you? Tuesday uh, night? Ish. Ish. You'll ish. be here ish. Okay, that's the voice of Chris Johnson from Rome Sausage. Good to catch up with you again. Thanks, man. It's good to be busy here. Busy summer. It just blinks by. Oh, man. Just like that. Yeah, I mean, it's our busy season, and we've been just, you know, head down and just cranking. So it's – and we're certainly blessed to, to have that kind of business. So, yeah, it's been good. We're also going to bring on right now Chef Dan Witherspoon. And uh, Chef Dan, you're a pillar of this community. You've been around. I'm not going to age you or anything, but you've been <laughs> around for a while. I'll welcome you to this. And I thought, hey, cool, let's talk a little bit of ingredients we'll talk about. And then we're going to jump into your cookbook, which I've really been enjoying. It's so well done. Thank you. So I can't wait to talk about that. And then your backstory as well is so interesting. But if you'll indulge us first, let's talk about some delicious sausage, which is the, the center of the plate right now. One of my now. favorite subjects. Really? Oh, Do you like sausage. you like sausage? Oh, yeah. All right. Where would you begin? Because I like to pair up chefs with delicious ingredients, especially local. I believe it's an obligation. If you find good ingredient, uh, uh, good ingredients, people, or 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 um, products that come from a community and they're within something you can use. It's kind of your obligation yes. to take a look at that and say, you know, Highlight that's them. something Highlight I can them. use. Yep. I'm just a big advocate of that. So when you start with ingredients, where, where would you start when it comes to sausage? I'm going to kind of let you take that interview role with Chris here. Well, I just want to start with the local markets, uh, what's available. Even though we're a cooking school, uh, mm-hmm. we don't buy wholesale. Uh, we want to be able to buy retail products that people are going to use in their homes. So we're not going to special order stuff in. We're not going to have things shipped from France or whatever. Um, So, you know, our biggest indulgence would be Costco. Uh, But typically we're shopping the markets. Uh, I'll be doing some farmer's market classes uh, coming up in the fall where we just go and buy what's there that day and use it. So So potentially this could be a partnership to where you look at each other (laughs) and you you look at products and say, hey, this is something that we might be able to use. Well, and Greg, let me back up, guys, because I don't know if the listeners were able to understand. You actually have the seasoned chef, which is a cooking school here in Denver. You, you is it how how does that work? Tell us about the seasoned chef a little bit, sure. Jan. Well, we've been here for 26 years. I'm actually the third owner, and we're the first school in Denver for home and recreational cooks. We don't do any professional programs or anything like that. So all we are trying to do, quite simply, is take the mystery out of cooking. That's nice. the nutshell version. We, we you know television makes it more complicated, and people just want access to mm-hmm. good food. So we show them how it can be done from technique perspective. A, B, the, how the techniques work. And then we do specialty classes that feature those things and feature regional cuisine. For instance, last night we just did a trip to South America. 
and did a did a couples class uh, featuring South American cuisine. So you brought something up, couples class. Do you yeah. do a series let, of let, classes? Let's dive into this. Yeah. Let's do sausage here real quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we want to dive into sausage, big guy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but are you thinking about a class for you and Greg as yeah, a couple? I am. Right? As a couple. We, we could go all, together. Yeah. We, we, we're really good. Yeah. Just well, remember, I mean, we say a couple is two people. A couple is two people. There you go. Yes. <laughs> a couple, couple of buds. A couple yep. of pals. Nothing weird just, about that. Just, at all. Just cooking it up. Uh, here, here's what I enjoy is, I, a, again, I go back to local. I mean, and that's what we do here, uh, Chef, is we do local ingredients, local people products. Um, but it's very important that when we look at local products that it has to stand up on its own, though. It has to be good. Yeah. And I like a story behind it. So when you're doing classes, and, and this is just the way I operate, is I like to be able to say, oh, and by the way, did you know? And you start talking about the ingredients, and that's mm -hmm. what we'll get into a little bit of your backstory. Mm -hmm. But I've fallen in love with this story. And just when I thought you were the most handsome man in the room, but right. then you had to bring this guy with you. I know. I It's and yeah. talking oh, about I thought you were pointing to talking me. about oh. family yeah, he business. Should have I was, I was, but th but then I looked right past you, just like I am at the bar. When I was twenty, I'd get the looks at the bar, and yeah. now they're looking right. That's right, <laughs> looking right over my shoulder, right. Uh, right. And it's uh, Ryan. Ryan, yep. Ryan yep. nice to meet you. How do you tie into this sausage madness? So I'm Chris's brother-in-law, and uh, married his youngest sister. So uh, he asked me to come on and keep an eye on him, you know, take yeah, care of him. Keep, keep enemies <laughs> closer kind of thing. Exactly. But not, not to take words out of your mouth, but Ryan uh, is the backbone of our operation day to day. He hand mixes the spices, he handles production and some distribution things. And he's a large part of, of what we do. And uh, we wouldn't be successful without him. So I wanted to you wow. know, bring him bring him on and show him some love. And, and that's recorded. You and know that, don't you? Yeah, it's probably going to come up at, at review time. Like, <laughs> hey. <what is> he? <laughs> but, you know, Ryan, Ryan's an awesome dude. He's a, he's a great husband to my sister and a, a great uh, father to his kids and does an awesome job for us. And we're just I'm pleased to, and blessed to have family. him. Yeah, so. See, nice. that makes sausage, and you have delicious, delicious sausage, but it makes it taste even better. To yeah, me and you know, when I hear something ab like absolutely. that. Absolutely. We're, we're a family owned, family run business, and mm -hmm. we like to you know, take care of folks and, and, and make stuff the right way, and I think it, it, it comes through in, in, in the product. Absolutely, it does. Now, you've had an opportunity, Chef, to be able to, and, and your benchmark. What's your benchmark when you're working with ingredients? Because obviously, taste. Mm -hmm. But wh where do you go with that to say, hey, I, am, I really like what I'm looking at here? Well, I like to think of that as a little more individual mm -hmm. rather than me telling people where to shop. Uh -huh. um, because everybody's got their own ideas. My job is to say, this is how to cook it. Perfect example. Well, should I buy wild-caught or farm-raised salmon? Mm -hmm. And I say, I don't care. This is how you cook it. The money that you're going to spend is your decision. I know where there's some really great sausages, but this is how you cook them, whether you bought Farmer John or bought these. And then that will empower you to make the better decision. So yeah. when you are going and buying local and getting things like that or buying the type of fish that you might be or the meats or whatever, you know how to cook them. Yeah. See, and that's why I think the disc, because, you know, great chef right there, novelty cook is what I am. But I let the meat stand on its own. I don't want to go too far outside. I'm going to let that. I'm going to say, hey, uh, Rome Sausage, I think I cooked it pretty darn good, but I'm going to let this product stand on its own. Yeah. And with, with the procedures of what you're doing there at your facility, uh, talk about that a little bit because I think it's remarkable. Yeah, so uh, we were just chatting with Little Rich in the break about <clears throat> the meatballs that we're doing now. And really, um, you know, everything we do is in a couple hundred pounds at a time. It's a real small batch scenario. We hand mix the spices. And when I say we, I mean... Ryan, right, hand mixes the spices, so it's a very hands-on boutique artisan style product, and uh, we're able to control, you know, the quality a little bit better than say the, the larger guys. And um, it's a soulful uh, effort we're putting forth every day, and, and like I said, I think that shines through in the product. You know, in the same way that Chef is teaching folks to honor ingredients and, and get it on the plate, and you know, uh, let things shine. We're doing the same thing, just from a you know sausage factory standpoint mm -hmm. so so i i gotta address that because chef brother luck says that he's on the phone waiting chef if you can hear me do you mind if we call you back at 7 45 when distillery 291's on the air i think that'd be a hoot um see if he can do that if not we'll try and catch him at 7 32 but i, I want to stay focused on this as we can and again chef brother luck in the kitchen doing his thing at four by brother luck um we appreciate your time but we got to jump uh, forward and ahead 
Uh, so thank you very much. Rome Sausage, people ask me, and I say, well, you know, I, and I send them to your website right. if they'd like some, some sausage. Sure. Uh, what's the best way to really get in touch with you to have this sausage, whether you're a restaurant or just a home consumer? Yeah, there's a couple options. If you're a restaurant, we distribute via Shamrock and also direct. So give us a shout. We can, we can do that. And Ryan will bring it out because that's what we do. And um, you'll see his face instead of mine, which is probably more pleasing, I think, in some capacities. Um, and uh, as far as the home chefs, we do a little bit of um, kind of direct to consumer, but it's 99% food service. So yeah. that's where our, our bread is buttered, so to speak. I can't wait to taste this. Get after it. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We always thank you for your time. That's Chris Johnson. It's a hard guy to catch up with, but when we do, we love to uh, just show off your products because it's the best of my estimation. Appreciate that. All your sausage needs. It's Rome Sausage. You might think this is actually on, just so you know, that it is really hot back here. I'm not just sweating for no, because I'm nervous to be around Ryan. (laughs) It's it's a lot, man, right? He's he's the eye candy of the operation for sure. (laughs) It's, um, It's a pleasure to meet you. We saw you here a couple of days ago dropping off this sausage for the chef. And thank you so much for doing that, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, Spotlight on Chef Dan Witherspoon. That'll be next right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, Greg. Hey, look who I've got in the corner over here. Lori, I've got royalty here. Lori, I asked Lori to come in the corner with me for a minute, and she wasn't repulsed, so score for Team Rich. Yeah, he did. He wanted to put me in the corner. <laughs> and then there was something about up my dress. So. Yeah, I, I, don't know, I, I don't know what that was. Lori, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. We love having you. You're, you, put, you here is like putting this beautiful bow on a pig. Uh, there's no other way of putting it. No other way of putting it. It looks like you're having fun. I'm having fun. I'm having a great time. I have never been here before. This is my first time. The kitchen setup is absolutely brilliant. And despite the fact that you don't think this is terribly professional, it is. Like you guys, you guys have your. Can I say the S word? You you have your stuff together. You <laughs> well, do. We're trying. We're trying real hard. I mean, you know, this behind us, everything's so super organized. The guests are fantastic. I love it. I think that this is super super cool. The this is the future of Denver, right? Oh, awesome. it is. Lori, it is. Come and back, so see much us fun. again. Please. Thank you. We have an open invitation thank you. every Saturday. Come here. Thank you. Okay. I will. Thanks so much. Oh, I thank you so much, it. Lori. Okay. So was the was the corner painful? The what? The corner painful? It, oh, yeah. Not at all. She's good. Hey, we're gonna be right back. We've got some words from our sponsors. <laughs> Barely getting by? Making minimum payments? You should know. The credit card companies are tricking you into thinking there's no way out. Credit card companies would rather you didn't know that there are ways you can become debt-free and you don't have to pay the entire amount you owe. There are debt relief programs that help people like you escape overwhelming credit card debt. National Debt Relief has helped over 100,000 Americans just like you reduce more than $1 billion of debt. National Debt Relief is A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and have over 35,000 five-star reviews across accredited review sites. You don't have to declare bankruptcy or take out a consolidation loan. You have the right to settle your debt for a mere fraction of what you owe. Reduce a large portion of your debt now. Call National Debt Relief at 800-793-0833. 800-793-0833. That's 800-793-0833. Hi, I'm Andrew Moore, brewmaster at the Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. At Intrepid Sojourner, beer tells a story inspired by my adventures as a well-traveled archaeologist. My recipes draw inspiration from all over the world, from historical styles like satis, grazers, and kvass, to adjunct beers inspired by flavors from international cuisines. My beers broaden the horizons of what beer can be. Explore basil IPA and Turkish coffee stout. Enjoy chai brown ale. Taste lavender tripel and the distinct horchata milk stout thoughtfully sourced spices and herbs enhance flavors inherent to indigenous beer styles my sincere hope is that intrepid sojourner beer project will inspire adventure and wanderlust come visit the tap room and share your tales with friends and plan your next sojourn located at 925 west 8th avenue in the heart of the arts district on santa fe for everything intrepid look us up online at sojournerbeers.com 
And remember to drink globally, locally. Hey, you guys. Jay Parker here for Encore Energy. How much are you paying for your natural gas? Wouldn't you like to save 10 to 20% on your natural gas bill? Of course you would. You're not crazy. Encore Energy and Brian Rizzuto can do just that. Save you money. Give Brian a call. 720-245-5771. Maybe you own a restaurant or a brewery and use a ton of natural gas. This is how you save money. Get a free savings review from Brian Rizzuto and Encore Energy. Call Brian at 720-245-5771. Save 10 to 20% on your bill right now. Rocker Spirits. It's a distillery. It's a place to hang. It's about quality. It's about taste. It's about passion. Infused with American spirit. Rocker whiskey. Rocker rum. Rocker vodka. Get ready for an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks, they've got the best food truck line in town. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rockerspirits.com. Rockerspirits.com. My name's Chef Keegan Gerhardt, owner of D-Bar, and you're listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. Hey, Craig. All right, we're back right now. And uh, it's very cool to catch up with Chef Dan Witherspoon. And uh, what we're talking about, not the cooking school right at the moment, but we will touch back on that. But this book is so well done, Chef, and it's Mix, Match, Make, Take. And High energy food for high energy people. That's the important part of that title. I, I think, and I think you're right, but I also think that the title, I always look for titles as like, how do you capsulize whatever you're doing with the, the book or, or anything? What's the headline? Your headline fits exactly what this book is, and I'd like you to talk about that for a minute, Chef. Sure. Well, when we were putting the book together, we were thinking about people that were really active mm-hmm. and wanted to eat better. W- when you're active, you don't have time to cook every day. So... And when you want to be healthy, you've got to eat right, which is basically fresh food and whole sure. grains. Yeah. Um, and, but you want it to taste good. So we compiled it in a way that all the flavors are healthy but delicious. Fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, fresh meats, whole grains, simple cooking techniques. And the techniques are explained in the front of the book because I've been teaching cooking techniques for home and recreational cooks now for 20 years. So I have a, a method, I have a language that I like to speak that communicates well to the home cook but then once you start getting the recipes you're like well wait a minute you know i really would have liked that pork chop with the brown rice and it, the cookbook saying do it mix and match the components so, any way you like so and, and you would think this uh, you know you're thinking chef this is a no bra- but is it is it a no-brainer because truly think about food waste right and a lot of people get on to a new dish a new recipe the next night if you're like me you're cooking for one maybe two if i'm lucky you know <laughs> type of thing. And, and you have some certain items that it, if you cook fresh and i try to and yeah. I, i'm one i don't know if i'm an anomaly or not but i shop daily every other day european shopping type of thing. Yeah. yeah well he's single <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I, I, li- I like good ingredients and i like to cook what what i don't like anything really Pre or, or prepared for me. Gotcha. But something like this, I'm going to have something good left over from the night before. I know that I am, but a lot of times I move on to it's a new day, it's a, and I'm, there I am at the market, and I'm and that pork chop that you were just talking about mm-hmm. is talking to me right. inside of my fridge, going, "You're really going to waste me because you want to move on." <laughs> when I could prepare ahead of time to say, "You know what? I don't need to do that," and that's exactly what's so perfect about this cookbook. Right. It's not called leftovers anymore. It's called overstock. Overstock. Like that. So I'm making overstock. All right. Sounds so good. So I'm cooking once, and I'm eating two to three times. So if you're looking at the plate, you've got a, a pork dish. You've got some simple steamed carrots. You've got some simple braised lentils. Very simple things. Nice and healthy. A nice piece of pork chop. Clean, not necessarily lean, but clean. Okay? There's a little fat cap on there. It's all good. And then the flavor comes from the olive tapenade. That's a big, bright, beautiful flavor that's healthy. All the ingredients that are good for you. But it's amazing flavors because it's Mediterranean. It's hard to tell you this is good for you. Yeah. I know that might come as a surprise. Questions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you work around the protein? No. And yes, I work around the components. So the, the, the protein, for instance, I can put that top on a piece of fish. I could put it on a chicken breast. I could put it with a steak. It'll work with any protein. So, no, it's not focused around the pork. The pork chop isn't dependent on the tapenade. The tapenade is a versatile sauce. Yes. So all the sauces in the cookbook go with a wide variety of proteins. 
and that's the key. And then, as we talked about, there's instructions how to take your f meal that you've made for four people, and you it may be just one or two, and then how to pack it and get it ready for the next day and eat it either cold with a little vinaigrette on there or hot, reheated, layered, and stacked and ready to go. So you've got the option of how you want to eat it the next day. Chef, if I'm, if I'm hearing what you're saying, are, are you taking a couple bases – and then saying, we're going to use these bases through a few yeah. dishes over the next couple days. Yeah. Is that, is that where, is is that that where you're coming from? And the cookbook is laid out. So yeah. mix, match, make, take. That's the name of the cookbook, High Energy Food for High Energy People. Mm -hmm. Chef Dan Witherspoon here with us right now. And as you go through this cookbook, and I, again, I've looked at these recipes, and each one of them I go, through, I go, man, I want to do that. I want to do this. <laughs> but there's certain things that you say are carryovers that you can mix and match. Right. Yeah. Right. Not only that, we've got two uh, uh, table of contents in there. One is the way we built the dishes with the components, and every dish is built of components. So you have a recipe for a olive tapenade, and it's not pork dependent. It's, it's its own sauce. And then we have a second table of contents that lists all the proteins, lists all the vegetables, lists all the flavors, lists all the, the starches and, and foundations. It's great. This so you great. can literally go to that front and go, you know, those things sound good. I wonder if I can put them together. And the answer is yeah. So what made you come some, up with this? Yeah, what was well, your inspiration? Yeah. Well, it started when I got diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And I do train in martial arts. So uh, I work with Z Ultimate, and they have a bunch of dojos around the area. And my instructor said, hey, you know, I know you're up against it. You can't even have contact, but I'm still going to train you. So you're staying fit. But let's do a cookbook. He says, my instructors don't have time to eat. So they're getting fast food and all that stuff. I want them to be able to cook a couple times a week and have food travel with them. So yeah. they can bring it and have it because they work 12 to 9. Sure. So that was the birth of the idea well then we just got carried away <laughs> you know like cooking so i took the restaurant concept of you build things in components and you have your components ready your dish comes yes. in for the order i'm grabbing these different components yep. and bring them together on the plate and the last thing i do is fire off the protein but my sauce is already made maybe i got a, a little thing brown rice already cooked maybe ready to go it's in my steam table i reheat a few vegetables that have been blanched off the, the in the morning and i pull your four or five components together on that plate all of which are pre-prepared except firing off the protein. Yeah, and here's a great segue back to the cooking school because your uh, experience with the cooking school as well as you talk about um, not just being a cook but being a home chef, having that chef element inside yeah. of you to where, and I'll let you talk about it, to where you have those skills to be able to do that, that it's going to make, it's going to be a little more apparent to you what kind of flavors you can mix and match. Yeah, well, people really don't think of cooking the way they should because cooking is a craft just like woodworking or playing a sport or any other hobby you might take up you got to learn it and then you got to practice it and the learning part is learning the techniques the most important techniques are listed in the book how to grill how to saute how to emulsify how to taste and adjust seasoning they're all listed up in the front then with a little practice come to a couple a class or two which isn't expensive come and let us show you how the techniques work great website by the way and your calendar oh. is off the hook thank you thank yeah. you yeah you really just that. no brainer you can see what's going on there and it's a really cool thing what's the website again i think the season chef.com yeah the season yeah. tell me if this is not just the coup de gras to where you go in you take a few classes and get those fundamentals down and then you grab one of these cookbooks and you go home and you're like oh my god i'm in the zone there you at go this point in time, yeah right that's, that's a great way to look at yeah. it, being in the zone. Yeah. yeah. And then you practice a little bit. You understand how the techniques work. You own them, and now you start to mix and match them. Well, and where can you get the book, Chef? Yeah. You can get it anywhere. You can buy it right from our website. Um, it is available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. It is available as an e-book with all of the major outlets. Uh, so any place that sells e-books, like Kobo and you name it, we're on it. Uh, we're even the Walmart Kobo site. Oh, great. You so when you too. say ebooks, I can put it on my iPad and just flip through yeah. it right there. Yeah, half the people. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a coffee table book. I think Chef, so, too. It is, it's a beautiful book. So we're, Please, we're it, just and getting gifts, it into the market. Yeah. But you can buy it directly from us. We'll mail it right to you yeah. uh, at the Season Chef. You can come to the school and buy it. Pick it up there, of course. Um, but um, we li literally set it up so nationwide. If you went to any bookstore and said, I want to order this book, they'll have it brought in and shipped to you. Where and, is and the Season Chef? 
Season Chef is in the Mace, the Fair, Mace Fair District of Denver. So we're Love just a that. little bit east and south of the corner of Colfax in Colorado. Mm -hmm. nice, nice old neighborhood. And we've been there for 26 years. Yeah, I'm a Denver boy, so I grew up, you know, I, yeah. I'm one of those guys, Albion Ash, Birch Bel Air, Cherry Claremont, Dexter Dahlia. I can go all the way up to you, you got it's yeah. your I'll, ABCs, I'll spare that a, on a, you, man. A, A, B, B, C, yeah. C, D. And, and they're and then, on some shrub or, or a tree. And then you or, think of Colfax as 15th Avenue, uh -huh. and you work the numbers in the opposite directions, yeah, yeah, and you're absolutely. all over it. Yeah, you can get anywhere with that. Uh, it's so cool. And, and I, I want to do more with you, and we're going to have you back multiple times, and I think we'll do some long-form stuff with you Love here to. during the week. But we have a gal that works with us on Gut Health. Her name's Carly Smith, the fairy gut mother. And she's one of those folks that, <laughs> just like you, you find something that, that is with health-driven. And food is really the impotence of, of health-driven, of trying to get you back on track. She, through gut health, cured herself of Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And you were able to bring into remission. You're not on any medications right now, from what I understand. No. And there was a term I coined, and I loved yours too. I'll, I'll let you share it. Is that I believe the responsibility in chefs these days, it goes beyond just serving a dish and how you can load it with whatever that the responsibility is. You're kind of a pharma chef. You are actually doing what the pharmaceuticals, you take those out of the equation and giving them great foods that are going to be able to give your body the nourishment that it needs to be able to heal. Yeah. And that's exactly what you've done. Well, good fresh food is the foundation for any direction you want to go in terms of food as medicine. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to cook. And the biggest problem a lot of people have is they want to cook right, but they don't know how. So you get that step first. Then you, we actually do food as medicine class. We have a registered dietitian, so you want to do something anti-inflammatory, we do a class on how that works. Good stuff do right there, insulin, man. Insulin manager. And I know more and more people that get better results in their healing process. Why don't people do more than that? I mean, you, you as a chef, and, and you can take this on and say, I'm going to show you how to have a, a, a low glycemic index throughout the day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to teach you how not to spike your blood sugar throughout the days and be able to keep it through the proteins and the foods that you eat. Well, but the big thing is it's what you don't eat. That's and that cool. of the big ones, of course, are sugar mm -hmm. and gluten or the, you know. Yeah. I don't want to demonize them, but uh, well, everything. They, can, they can be problematic for Especially a lot of people. Especially when you pile them on. Yeah. yeah. And you're talking about inflammation, not a lot of right. that Deep fried ice cream. There you go. Well, the right. problem is I think there's so much processed foods out there these days, and yeah. people don't realize most processed foods are high in sugar because that's what you, you know, high right. in sugar and salt. In, right. It's those things that, that yeah. get you to eat them. I mean, chef, I, I congratulate you because you're a chef, an educator, a black belt. A philanthropist. Why can't I say that word? Philanthropist. Philanthropist? Yes. But yeah, a survivor. You can't say it because I'm not that yet. And so. a survivor, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so, you know, kudos to you, Chef. You're beating the drum. Yeah. You, you are really living the dream. Yeah. Well, the big thing, and I want to pass this message on to everybody, is, you know, that I, I didn't create a cure for anything. Um, we can't cure ourselves necessarily with this, but we can support our process. And the more you can do things that you like, the things that you love about life, whether that's your relationship, your religion, your profession. I love my prof I love teaching. I taught all the way through my cancer treatment. I took a, a month off to do the stem it cell transplant. It probably kept you going. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. it. So it kept me going, and it, and it fueled me, and it kept me going. So, you know, they're, they're looking at me going, eh, how'd you, you know, this is great. This is what we want. And I talked to my doctor. He says, you've got to do what you love. And you got to be a part of what you really like, and that's the biggest support you can do because everything else is out of your control. Yeah, we're catching your You don't have control passion. over the yeah. chemo. You don't have control over. So do what you can. Control everything you can, and accept what you can control. And do the best you can, and it worked. Chef Daniel Willis <laughs> Witherspoon. There you go. Thank you for coming out tonight. Sure. I, I can't tell you're a true inspiration to people. And a new friend of the yeah, show. Yeah, new friend of the show. Check out his cookbook. Yeah. Check out the seasoned chef. Super important. He's a survivor. He's a black belt. He's a teacher. Thank you. My pleasure, guys. Anytime. There he is. Thanks, Hope Chef. to see you again soon. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Chef Dan Witherspoon right there, and he will come into the kitchen. We're going to go pay a visit, too, to the seasoned chef. Hope so. All right. We'll be back, and a, a new chef is on the horizon. I can't wait to talk to her. She's going to be coming up next, and then 745 is booze in the news, all the booze news you can use with Distillery 291, and Brother Luck's going to check in as well. That's the home stretch, and we'll be back in a flash from Studio Kitchen Colorado on the iHeart Network. Thanks, Greg. What a great segment. You know, you know, it's funny. All week, you guys have been saying, Little Man's going to be on. Little Man's going to be on. I thought you were talking about me. I didn't know it was Little Man ice cream. 
Holy cow! So we've got Elena, Elena, right? Alana. Alana, Alana, Alana. I'll say that a thousand times, okay, Alana, Elena, Alana. Uh, tell us about Little Man. Well, we have some really fun community-focused events coming up. This upcoming Tuesday is actually National Root Beer Float Day. And I'm in. we're going to be giving away over 200 free root beer floats. Holy cow. I might so, need 175 of them. Join us between 5 and 8 p.m. on Tuesday at the factory. And where is that? 4411 West Colfax. That's at Colfax and Tennyson. Oh, that's where all that new stuff is coming Yes. In. Oh, my gosh. Well, the ice cream you brought was fantastic. Go see my new best friend, the GM <laughs> of the retail store. Yes. At the factory. Got some great stuff. And Tuesday, I mean, are you kidding? I may go over there and get in line right after the show. Sounds good to Is me. Is that okay? <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Come see us again, please. Yes. Hey, keep a word. We've got uh, Chef Raquel coming up. Where is she? She's up, and we'll be right back. It's your hyper-local source for all things sausage awesomeness. My family is proud to carry on the fine traditions of Rome's founder, Jerry Rome, by producing a variety of amazing sausage in small batches, with an eye on quality, not quantity. Every batch is made here in the great state of Colorado by hand mixing spices, utilizing lean cuts of pork to make an outstanding product. Sourcing ingredients and materials locally, we are committed to supporting local vendors, chefs, restaurants, and the entire Colorado food scene. Getting hungry yet? Brats, Italian, breakfast, hot Polish, green chili, chicken apple, and the world's best chorizo. You can source all of our sausage through a variety of food service distributors. If your distributor doesn't carry it, call us. We'll come direct. You want a custom item? We'll do that too. Samples, and of course, sausage jokes, can be had by contacting me directly at chris at romesausage.com or by phone at 303-296-7663. The modern eater loves Rome sausage, and I know you will too. Wear black and eat spices. Hey, modern eater listeners, this is Zach from the Spice Guy, Colorado's fa One minute to the life. Spice is the variety of life. At the Spice Guy, we have a passion for one. Let me go past this life. Okay, uh, so just put it in the next break. Ingredients, or let us create and blend custom. Do you want me to just throw it in the next break? No. Is that you're working with, with over 1,000 restaurants, food brands, and chefs behind us, you can't go wrong when you choose. Uh, you don't. You don't right now. Born in Breck, raised in Denver. The spot. You want to do it in 30 seconds? On its calling. Okay, sounds good. Colorado Chefs Association. Are you ready to put your passion to work? Well, we train the future chefs of Colorado, and we want you to join us. The Colorado Chefs Association is recruiting for our fall semester right now. Join our American Culinary Federation accredited cooking program. Work in a professional kitchen and get Ten. while earning your sous chef certification. Email me at Colleen at ACF Colorado Chefs. Four, three, four. Okay, we're going to catch up with Chef Raquel Serbert uh, here in just a minute, but I can't. Chef Daniel Witherspoon, he just signed this cookbook for me, and this is going right on my coffee table, Brian. That's so in the cook well, eat well, and live well. I knew you'd never ask for me, that, that, brother, that gave, and so I did that, man, because I love you, babe. Take a bow. You're like no. George Costanza. I bought you the big salad. <laughs> I bought you the big salad. Yeah, that's right. Like, that's you didn't have the A plus <laughs> beverage solutions. Jeff Rourke and A plus beverage solutions. Another family owned and operated business. Specialty tap installations. Beer, wine, water, coffee, nitro, making tap dreams reality. Foam is money. You know that, Brian. Pouring inefficient beer. What are you doing, boys? You're, You're pouring, pouring your money down, down the, the drain. drain. Don't look tacky and pour your money down the drain. All you have to do is a phone call away. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions, 720-272-3809. Did you write that down, Brian? No, but I'm going to get a pen. Give me one second. All right. I'll, I'll hold. But tell me about how great his beer is while I'm getting that pen. Well, he doesn't brew beer, but he, no, would, he, brews, really, he would really like it to taste the way the brewer. He cleans the lines. He cleans the lines. He'll do it all for you. He'll make sure that your glycol system's perfect. He'll do it all. 720-272-3809. One more time. 720. I'm serious. If you're listening to me, there's so many people that call us up. Greg. Hey, man, I need someone to come out and maintain my lines. We get reports from all over town when all they're pouring town. foam. He's the guy. 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke in A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Hey, this is Brother Luck from Springs. All right, you ready? <laughs> Owner of 4 by Brother Luck and Lucky Dumpling. I mean, he's, he's a very, very impressive man. And you're rocking with the modern gear. 
She's cool as a cucumber, and she's sitting right in front of us. Bring that mic right up to you just a little bit there. Yeah, there She you really right. is cool. You know, she's know. the only one in this kitchen not sweating. She's How does she do that? I know, and she's <laughs> in the kitchen. Her name is uh, Chef Raquel Serber, and uh, she's right now working at the Juniper Pig in the Stanley Marketplace, which I love the Juniper Pig. I always say, if you want your old-school butcher fix, go into the Juniper Pig, and they've got all kinds of great options for you, but... Beyond that, she's a visionary and an entrepreneur, and Alita is your next project. Welcome to the show. Gracias. Good to see you. Thank you. Toda. Gracias. We'll do both languages. You can do it all. <laughs> Toda. What else do you know? <laughs> so her background is, Brian, and it's pretty interesting, is that she's got a lot of South American culture in her, too, in living, but then also she took a trip over to uh, the Mediterranean, and you spent a stint in Israel as well, and you combined two foods together, and that's where she gave you both welcomes. Well, yeah, so the synopsis of that is I was born to a Mexican woman and an older Jewish man who both passed who away it? by the time I was seven. Who was it? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was adopted by an Israeli man who eventually, when I graduated college here at Johnson & Wales, we're from California, but I wanted to come to Denver. He said, come to, they decided all to move to Israel while I was in college. And he said, come over here to Israel. Let me teach you how to run a business. And I said, no. Nah. But I did. And it was. Good I for mean, you. Wow. I came back with a lot more tools than I left with. That's for sure. It's fantastic. Like a and female opening a business in the Middle East, you know. Well, that's a big, I mean. A Mexican that, business. Yeah, that's a big, big thing. I mean, you're taking something that no one even knows about. I mean, there's not really many Mexican food restaurants no. in No. Yeah, what well, was Israel. there? No, so there are a lot of, so the tech industry in Israel is huge. So there's a lot of people who go to the U.S., you know, for extended amounts of time to do some, you know, tech work. So they come back with kind of like the Mexican flavor and they can't find it in Israel. So that was the niche that I followed. But you picked up a little Mediterranean flair along the way. Oh, my. I mean, that was from the moment he adopted me as a kid, you know, just okay. watching him. He yeah. was a great cook. So I was always watching, always playing. Can I squeeze the lemons for you? You know, taking information. And same in Mexico as a kid, you know, the older ladies making the salsa. I, w I, I would go out there and play with the kids, but I was in the kitchen a lot, just kind of like, hmm. This is what I think what's I want to do. What's the biggest, <laughs> in, in culture, what was the biggest food-wise? What was the biggest thing that was apparent to you? Mexico. Mexico, I mean. They would cook anything. Well, <laughs> right? I, I mean, think truly. the word Mexican in food is, is one and all. The word Mexican in family, I mean, it's so strong. It's just a day-to-day, -day, you know, love of taking, I mean, this is why so much of the money that is made here in America is sent to Latin American countries. I mean, people don't forget their families. I think a lot of people who would leave their families would be like, woo! But no, that, I mean, it's family, it's food, and it's... Cultures. Well, yeah, well, it's that, that Latin thing, too. Yeah. I mean, if, if a lot of people realize Latin was so ingrained in, like, food and family and love... I mean, everything you're speaking yeah. to right now. And that's, that's what I find interesting because I one, wonder really how Israel played a part for you in that because that is so different. I mean, that's a culture where, you know, women, are, women didn't have rights. Women, women aren't like held up as they are in the Latin family so much right. there. And so it's really interesting what I you did. I would actually say women are much more respected in Israel just because Israel is like the only democracy in yeah. the Middle East mm -hmm. and it's very advanced. So, you know, I had to, some of my friends visit me from California and, you know, they're like, what is this Orange County? You know, if you go to a lot of the places, it's super developed, super modern. Uh, I would say more in Mexico kind of. Um, a little bit more shame of who you are, not wanting to teach the kids Spanish once they're in the United States because that's going to hold you back kind of deal. Interesting. Yeah, we could talk history and culture with you all day long, um, but I'm really interested in your new endeavor and your food, and I fell in love. I mean, and, and that's the thing with guys. We fall in love just right through the food, <laughs> right? And we fell in love with you through your food, and you cooked us something on Beer Craft, which is a modern eater sh uh, network show on Monday, and what you cook on Monday? So on Monday, I went to a place here downtown that makes actual 
nixtamalized, like whole corn ground masa. And so it was that fresh masa. I made this really nice uh, bean paste, which I kind of used some Middle Eastern techniques, some French techniques to make this Mexican bean paste. And people taste it and they're like, this isn't regular bean paste because it's not. Uh, or bean sauce. Um, I made my kind of salsa that's brought me here, which is my dream, you know, to combine this salsa and hummus, which is super smoky because I char onions and I get that ash in there, which is kind of coming from my own traditions, from my, from my mom. So it's like... I'm getting to know both of my parents who I lost so early through learning about oh, where they came man. from. That's fantastic. What did you cook tonight? So this is, I like to be just straight up with my mistakes too. So on my way here, I lost my tahini. Yeah. So I used goat cheese instead. So I made a goat cheese chipotle hummus. This is a really nice, it's almost like a skirt steak. I worked at the, I work at the Juniper Pig and I work with this great guy named Travis Stovall who goes around Colorado and works with small farms, small grass fed farms who don't have the power to bring their meat mm -hmm. to market. He brings it for yeah. me. And so this is called actually Chuck Flat Meat, which is not super sexy to say, but it's, it's the skirt steak, just a little bit fatter, lean, kind of those long striations. I uh, marinated it in mole and this really great marinade I made for three days. Uh, I put it here on the coals. Um, my salsa, I actually pickled some lemons and salt, which I, use, which I learned from some Moroccan people in Israel. Uh, and I combined it with my salsa because it really brightens things up. On, the, on these little uh, yellow cherry tomatoes, I did black sesame seeds and smoked sesame seeds, a little bit of cucumber, which is Israeli salad. That's tomato, cucumber, onion. Israeli salad, you eat it, and lemon and good olive oil and good salt. Wow. You eat it with everything. So just my memories, I'm bringing them into what I'm making. Lori Mitz, and she says, oh, that's so good. Yeah, that I know, she so already gave me compliments. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so this was over in the corner, and I, I was eyeing it. And I took one bite of it, and I couldn't, it's what you just said, I knew that there wasn't tahini in there, and I was wondering what it was, and it's the goat cheese. Yeah. I kid you not, when I say that is some of the best hummus I have ever had in my Stop entire it. life. No, I'm not kidding. I want to take wow. a vat of that home <laughs> with me. Okay. She's, she's already stored it over there, mm -hmm. so I can't pilfer it, but... I, I would. I think we can wrap that Well, what's your oh take, God, though, Lori, on that? So I mean, did good. you hear us? She's got hummus and... I, 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 I have to say, I've, I've never heard of you, but just listening to you for the past five minutes, like, I want to be your best friend. Can we and, do, can and I we, think you can. Can we do that? She's going to be think? back a lot more, She's but phenomenal. this new project that you have coming up, is it ready? Are you ready to start doing things, or are we going to have to have you back? So I'm just warming up with you guys. Yeah. I want to get to know you. I want to feel this place <laughs> so that when I come with my guns yeah. blazing like an Israeli I soldier, I just did. I did, you did. <laughs> Chef Cerber. All right, we'll see you more. Thank okay. you. All we right. definitely uh, have her, her guns blazing today. <laughs> All right, two, I kid you not, that hummus is spectacular. <laughs> yes, it is. Well two, done. Two ninety ones coming is. up next. We're going to have the boys, and then I think Brother Luck's going to check in as well. Lori Mitzkin's going. Lori Mitzkin's going to come down the home stretch with us. Uh, one more segment left. It went by quick, Brian. It did. It's booze in the news. Yep. Coming up next <laughs> on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Okay, guys, we're making our final approach. As I usually say, put your chairs up, your table trays in the upright position. Uh, we saved kind of the best for last year. We got Chef Dan Witherspoon, who just did a segment. Uh, Dan, tell us a little bit about how we can get a hold of your book. Well, the, you can buy the book through us, of course, at The Seasoned Chef. We carry copies ready to ship. You can buy it on Amazon, both as the cookbook. If you like the hard copy, you can also buy it as an e-book. It's also available as an e-book any, through any of the portals that you can buy your e-books. They're all, all there from Kobo to I and all that stuff. Uh, you can order it through most cook store, book stores as well. Uh, it, they are available through them as well, so you can special order. But the fastest way, just give us a holler, go to our website, and plug it in and say, Here's my money. Where's my book? <laughs> That's awesome. So, Chef, I want to get you in the frame with this. We got mix, match, make, take. Get this. Get this. Get this. We've are, we're getting ready to enjoy some of the food yeah, now. Yeah, the food. That, that's awesome. Thank Great. you, Chef. 
please come see us again. Thanks. Well, we're heading into the final stretch. We got a few of our last sponsors, South River Growers Organic Colorado Mills. We'll be right back. Accounting and payroll, keep your time and money. Mike Campbell here, serial entrepreneur. Doing payroll is no longer a headache for our customer, Jeff. I've used various payroll providers in the past, and none can hold a candle to Patriot Software. Their software is ridiculously easy to use. The support staff is knowledgeable and courteous. I am very excited that Patriot Software files my tax forms for me, not just providing the forms like other payroll companies do. As a business owner, managing payroll has been a long-time headache that I no longer struggle with thanks to Patriot Software. I definitely rate your company five out of five stars. Go to PatriotSoftware.com to get your payroll pricing for up to 100 employees. Use promo code RADIO and get two months of payroll processing free. That's PatriotSoftware.com. PatriotSoftware.com. Accounting and payroll. Keep your time and money. Get ready to change the way you look at food. This is Peter Allman, the founder of South River Aquaponics and Alpenglow Mushrooms. As a Le Cordon Bleu trained chef, I know the importance of quality ingredients. That's why in 2013, I left the fine dining industry to start a sustainable organic farm. At South River Aquaponics Alpenglow, we are the leader in sustainable growing practices, utilizing our natural resources as effectively as possible. No pesticides, no GMOs, no funny business, just clean, honest food production. We use old world techniques combined with modern technology to bring you the best possible produce. Our gourmet mushroom facility provides CO2 for our greenhouse that grows tilapia as well as lettuces and herbs in our aquaponic system. Look for us in natural grocers, city market, and served on the plates of Colorado's finest chefs. At South River Aquaponics Alpenglow Mushrooms, we're growing greener. To learn more about aquaponics and see our products, go to our website at southriveraquaponics.com. South River Aquaponics, the future of farming. My dad's vegetables are so good, I can't live without them. Hey, Colorado chefs. Brian Freeman with Growers Organic and the Modern Eater Talk Show. Do you care about where your food comes from? I do. Do you want loyalty from customers who care about that as well? I can help by providing top quality organic produce with reliable delivery, knowledgeable sales team who genuinely care about how food is grown, transported, and served. Chefs, Growers Organic will ensure you have excellent ingredients for your next James Beard dinner, your nightly specials, or your regular menu items. Join the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, cold-pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Now it's time for the Modern Eater's Booze in the News segment. I like my beer cold, my meat grilled, and my entertainment explosive. All we need is a, is a chair and a, and a cooler beer. Here's your booze news. Okay, that's it. Booze in the news. All the booze news you can use, and we're going to cover a lot of ground in this segment. Lori Mitzik continues here with a whiskey. 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 That's right, and uh, none better All than about the whiskey. Distillery 291 here with us. And uh, Philip Raleigh. And Thank Michael you. Michael Myers. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Good and see I think you, we have Brother Luck on the phone. Brother? Brother? Yeah, I'm here. I'm there, here. I'm hey, in the kitchen. Hey, brother. Uh, sorry we missed you last hour, man. I know you're working hard down there. And I did want to uh, riff a little bit about what you're up to this week. But I'm like, how do I do this in a booze in the news segment, which not, may not be the best time. So we're going to do some long form stuff on that when you get down here on Tuesday night for your dinner, if you don't mind. Oh, that sounds great. That's, Absolutely. That's fantastic. So it, the relationship here is kind of a Colorado Springs all in the house um, Mark Whistler just walked in. Sorry, I got distracted. All in the house with Colorado Springs. We've got a brewery coming in from Colorado Springs. What's the brewery's name? Brass yep. Brewing. Brass coming in. Uh, They're coming right in. next door to, to my restaurant, Lucky Dumpling. We love their stuff. Distillery 291 is going to be here with their delicious. Uh, what are you guys bringing? Well, I got to talk to brother, and I'm going to try to do a little cocktail that would reflect his menu. Uh, Can we do that right here, right now? Yeah, I'll sure. Have that talk? Brother, right, where does that begin? What's What's your favorite ingredient that you're uh, making? Um, you know your menu off the top of your head, brother. He yeah, said, right. He said, what do you guys have? I'll just cook that. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I was on Top Chef, and I had to uh, think on the fly. 
Um, the uh, the first course is a uh, is stone fruit. So, oh. uh, it's a uh, it's I'm an apricot and yep. with with uh, some compressed uh, cherries and some plums and nectarines. Uh, so I think that's a really good uh, really good lead in to to some two ninety one. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so like a rye or some, you know. Yep, make a nice sugar maceration with some some of those fruits and play with some plum bitters and black walnut bitters. I think we can make it work. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Rather continue on. Well, you've got a very – I should get your menu in front of me, actually. I have it right here. You probably – you have it memorized, though, don't you, brother? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the next course we're going to do is uh, kind of a, a twist off of something I grew up eating, uh, my wife and I both, uh, chorizo and eggs. We're going to do a chorizo and egg dumpling. So we're going to use the uh, – I believe the Polidori sausage, if I'm not mistaken. No, no. No, no, you're you... doing rabbit, aren't you? You got it for me. No, you're doing Rome's uh, Rome sausage uh, chorizo, oh, and then uh, rabbit from uh, Jefferson I'm Farms. I'm actually getting you. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do a chorizo uh, dumpling, um, which I think would be really fun. Steamed dumpling, shumai style with uh, with a hollandaise to represent the egg. Uh, we've got the rabbit empanada, so we're gonna use some of that local Colorado rabbit. Um, we're gonna braise that down, work that in with some green chili, turn that into a nice pastry, and do a, a rabbit empanada with cilantro chimichurri. And then uh, there's a beef cheek course. Uh, so we're going to braise uh, some beef cheek off in uh, red wine and roasted vegetables and tomato. Um, so that would be a really pretty course. And then uh, we're going to finish off with uh, with our version of a s'more, the four s'more. So, um, yeah, you're going to see some, some, some different types of meringues, some nice chocolates. It'll, uh, it'll be a really fun, fun course to kind of bridge it all together. Phillip's lit up here. You got some ideas? <laughs> it sounds like 291 is going to go really great with this, <laughs> really well this meal. Really well with all of it. <laughs> Sold out dinner. You can't come if you don't have tickets. Lori, you could probably come if you want to come. <laughs> Lori's my new friend. She might want to come. <laughs> Lori Midson's here. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, he's my kicker. We're going to both wear boots. Yeah, Lori's <laughs> yeah. interviewed Watch you out. before, brother. I don't know if you uh, remember. I'm sure you do. Lori Midson. I used to cover. I, I write for Visit Denver, and I used to write about you all the time when you were on Top Chef. I made a lot of luck jokes and puns. Like everybody. Like but, everybody. But no luck's given on Tuesday night, right, brother? Absolutely. I'm so excited to just be able to showcase and, you know, get to get to hang out with some of our Denver fans. You know, We're I, super I excited to have you come, come to this, uh, No, it, it's great. You know, I, I, I love cooking up there, and, and, you know, I get to cook with, with family, so it's, uh, it's special. Truly will be a family night. Okay, brother, you do the interv- interview role here real quick. 291, what do you want to ask him? <laughs> um... <laughs> Are you staying in Colorado Springs or not? Good question, brother. Oh, good question. <laughs> uh, the plan is to stay in Colorado Springs. We're looking for a special size building, and, um, you know, we're looking at 25,000 square feet. Jeez. And um, we've got a couple of places that I really like, but I don't want to talk about them yet because nothing's signed, sealed, or delivered. And um, hopefully next year we will be in a new space. Do another one, brother. <laughs> that was good. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, I, I, I don't want them to go anywhere. I love them too much. Okay. Um, no, no, Colorado Springs supports us so much. I couldn't go somewhere else. It would be really hard. All right. No more questions, brother. We have to try this uh, delicious <laughs> rye whiskey that We're we have in front off. of Brother, we'll see you Tuesday night. We love you so much. <laughs> see you Tuesday so, night, brother. So, have a good Sunday. So, so bad guy is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's coming out. Chef Brother Luck, four by Brother Luck, and Lucky Dumpling in Colorado Springs. What are we trying here real quick as we go out? So I made a 291 Colorado rye whiskey single barrel old-fashioned, very classic, uh, raw sugar, simple syrup, a uh, little bit of bitters, a little lemon, and a Luxardo cherry. Um, and it complements Michael's whiskey, his flagship, like nothing else. Yep. Delicious. It you is guys, delicious. You guys are absolute stars, and I love Thank what you, you guys so do. We love and what you do. We'll see them here on Tuesday night for Brother Luck's dinner. Uh, all's well in the world, and we have to thank Lori Mitson and the whole cast of crew thank who showed you up here tonight. Thank you very much for having me. So cool. And thank Chef you, Dan everyone. Witherspoon. Okay, we'll see you back here next Saturday night for another show. Live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, you're listening to The Modern Eater Show. Ever wonder why you're...